Here we go. Hello, everyone. Hello, and welcome to uh, season three, episode two of The Gamblers, our pirates, our traveler pirates of Drynex campaign. And I am so glad to see you all here. And I am so glad to have this crew here. I am um, I'm so excited. And I just can't hide it. And I, I'm about to lose control. I can tell. But uh, I think I like it. <gasps> Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, thank you for being here. Uh, we were off for two weeks. Uh, last week, I had a solo session the week before we had off, but we are here, we're back, and I believe we should be every week until the end of the season. And this season is going to be full of... I don't even know. I don't know what bad. these antagonists are going to do. I'm sure it'll just be fine. We full of nothing bad. Nope, nothing bad at all. Nothing, nothing bad. Speaking of badnesses, uh, I just want to say thank you for being here, everybody. Uh, all of y'all are bad. You're bad. You know it. Uh, <laughs> this is, this, if you want to support us, there are many ways to do it. The number one best way to do that is just by being here, uh, watching the show either live or on our VODs over on YouTube. And I did want to shout out uh, our, uh, some quotes we had from the YouTubes. Um, one was from Willen, who is our um, one of our amazing uh, uh, sponsors and also our note taker, without whom I would be lost, uh, who says, <clears throat> So awesome to see you all again. Sharing a breakfast with the crew was the best start to a new season. Please get a bottle or two of Tablasco sauce for me when you refill on number one. Good old, that sauce the best sauce. And then also Rufio Rufbum, who's one of our regulars on YouTube, says, yes, with A's. Uh, the gamblers are back. Ah, Crash Jones was yeah. carrying me over, but I ran out of Starbeam Chalky Milk, so I've just been waiting agonizingly for this return. And thank you. Uh, let it. me see. Oh, gosh, so much to share. It's been two weeks. Uh, so thank you for that. You can then also, uh, you know, uh, leave tips and bits. If you do, we will read out those messages uh, at the intermission and or end. Uh, the end, maybe also the intermission. You can also uh, spend channel points, although I've not turned that one on yet, but I will when they're giving their intros, uh, to create assets available for them on the planet. They cannot currently pick up new passengers. Um, let's see. Uh, and if you make an asset, it's a person. An asset's a person that they could chat with um, that maybe could be useful for them in some way. Possibly. We'll see. Uh, let's see. What else is there? Um, you can also be one of our Patreons. Uh, we have a Patreon that's at uh, Academic Foxhole, and the Patreon goes to pay for the cast and any kind of art or music. And of course, we're going to have more of those things we'll have to do. Uh, let's see. And I would like to thank a brand new, uh, we have a brand new Patreon, Prof Frink. And I want to thank Prof Frink for being one of our Patreons. And we have a very special um, uh, tier for the sponsorship tier, which is a 
$200 tier, which will pay for four cast members in one show in one week. Uh, and we have two sponsors. We have Will and TW and also Josh, me, and Art. And they get a special spot in our... Uh, they get a special spot. They get a special radio spot, and uh, they also get a special spot in our credits, and I want to thank them as well. But I want to thank everyone for being here, and I believe that is all of my starting stuff, which means we've got to do our um, our intros. I would like to have each one of our players... Oh, wait, I need to make sure I take notes, because uh, that's important. <clears throat> no reason. <clears throat> No, reason, no reason. No reason at all. I would like each one of our amazing cast members. Our our fifth cast member, Rocket Fox, is currently playing bottom in Midsummer Night's Dream, so cannot be here today. But this is the last weekend, so uh, she will be back next week. But if you might, I would love for you each to say who you are, what character you're playing. And uh, I would like... <laughs> so there was a question that I asked way back in the day that uh, everyone got to answer except for Laugh, Love, Lindy uh, for her character, Quint. So I'm going to... It's like a bit of a revisiting of this question to give people uh, and a chance, Lindy, a chance to answer. So when you arrive in a new system, it is a thing that each system has a... Well, each system with a, a high port, or with a, with a, a decent space port, uh, will have a welcome packet, which is a digital packet, which is sent out to you when you arrive, and it usually has information about that system. Uh, and it's more important to be very specific, it comes from the spaceport itself, which is important because not all spaceports are run by the same place that the planet, that runs the planet. Like in the last two places you were at, GDCo ran those, uh, those spaceports, not the planet itself, mostly because that pl those planets were very devastated and, you know, how it is. Uh, so you get a welcome packet from that uh, high port, which is usually about, like, you know, docking procedures, what the rules are, anything you might need to know about that place, um, information you might need to know. And those things are, you know, sometimes updated. Uh, if there's, if there's like, a quarantine or new news or anything like that, there, or events, something like that, that these things might be updated. But there's a packet, and that packet takes some space. And I had asked you all last time what you do with these packets, right? So it's all sent to you. You can not pay attention to them at all. You can just delete them without watching. You can watch them, then delete them. You can save them on your personal computer. You, you know, there are many different things you can do. And it, people gave me thoughts. Uh, Quint has not yet told us what, uh, what they do with their welcome packets. But I was wondering, um, since this is a, uh, a new round, I'm going to give... Uh, <laughs> I'm going to give this question in two parts. One, if you are Quint, please answer that question. What do you do with the welcome packet? <laughs> if you are not Quint, um, okay. I think I would like you to dream a little bit. Let's imagine that you are successful in your mission. And Drynax now becomes this large... Drynax unifies the reaches and is recognized by the Aslan and also the Imperium because if those two large forces do not recognize... Trinax as a unified polity it won't happen. So that's a thing. But, um, you know, so if they do, and you all get everything all set up the way you're supposed to do, how would you imagine your welcome, like, you get to be, because you're going to maybe run your own planet. You might be like the Duke of your own planet, perhaps. That's a possibility. So um, if you get to be the Duke of your own planet, how would you imagine your welcome packet being? How welcoming will it be? That's the question that I want to know. And I want to start with the with Quint, because it's, uh, Lindy, it's the easiest oh. one for you to answer. We'll just start with you. Sure. Oh, hi, yes, I'm Lindy, Laugh of Lindy, and I'll be playing Quint Vesper. Uh, you know, just good, all around general, decent, handy person to have around. Um, ex Solomon is spy, it's fine, I wouldn't worry about it. Um, ex I'm sorry, wait, bat. wait. What? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You just said ex Soleimani spy, and I do not believe <laughs> they believe that. Well, it does take two years for information to travel back to HQ, so uh, you know it's gonna take some time, probably. I wouldn't worry about it. Quint's not at okay. this exact moment in time. Um, <laughs> yeah, what Quint does with the welcome packets? I imagine Quint is the type, uh, due to perhaps uh, spy and performance background, 
uh, and also some time in the Navy. And, you know, there's a lot of things about Quint that we don't know yet, but um, I would imagine looks through it very thoroughly, memorizes key bits of information, almost as if it's like, like a, like a, like there's a couple types of people, you know, when you go to a tourist destination, someone who looks through all of the flyers or the, the little book at the hotel, I'm that person, but also like, you know, just examines thoroughly all the information present. So that way you can have it as quick handy reference later. That is Quint, uh, probably saves a copy somewhere as well. Um, it having been a surveyor for quite some time, probably has a lot of welcome packets. Uh, but yeah, no, definitely thoroughly goes through the welcome packet. Mm-hmm, Might even mm-hmm. information that could be useful. Okay, okay. Uh, I'm going to go now to our next uh, player. Uh, okay, I'm going to have to go with Cord because out of all of the uh, players, I feel like Cord's welcome packet, well, no, uh, Severance's welcome packet will probably be the most epic and exciting. So Cord, who are you, who you're playing, and wow. what kind of welcome packet would Duke, Admiral, Captain Baron, well, you have to get rid of the Baron, Duke Severance uh, have right, for right. the planet that he might be ruling? Uh, you really, uh, really uh, upsold me there, uh, Trooper. Uh, so the uh, the welcome packet being the thing that we would send to people about our territory, our dukedom, our yeah. Planet, like when somebody jumps into the system and gets within range, this you know, and they you <laughs> right, ping the high port. Be... Yeah, yeah. It's like a nice little like uh, hey. Oh boy. Um, no pressure. I feel like. How do you welcome people to your planet? You know? Yeah. Ships, pardon me. How would we. That's so hard. I don't know if Severance. Would... Severance doesn't like the welcome package. He, uh, mm-hmm. I think he, um, mm-hmm. always sort of skims them, and if they are mm-hmm. playing, he will play it at like four times or three times uh, the playback <laughs> speed, so he can just get through it. Um, mm-hmm. So I think it would probably be like as much as you were like, it's going to be epic. I actually don't know if it would be very um, robust. I think it would just be like, yeah. hello, welcome to the system. Um, your high port is this. Uh, you have a minimum of a day or two to uh, utilize the high port without without pay. But other than that, uh, you must uh, spend uh, your time and blah, blah, blah. And it, would, it would, and it would just be super simple, quick, and that's it. Um, if you have any questions, uh, don't contact me contact security uh um severance Sev, sevsec uh which is his private security um and uh sevsec will uh deal with all of your needs and if you have any issues uh, don't talk to me talk to sevsec instead that's why i hire them and that's why i'm paying them uh thank you welcome to uh welcome to sevatopia <laughs> love that uh we're gonna have to go next with i think ari uh because their character is after all a noble well that's uh, their nobility has kind of been downgraded a little bit but i mean noble blood uh really great noble blood very epic epically genetically engineered uh eugenicist noble noble blood blood. yeah yeah, the best noble blood (laughs) ari who are you playing uh tiger's blood uh uh, who are you who are you playing and (laughs) <laughs> and when Ari, when they become uh, ruler of their own planet, um, although it's kind of a tricky position, that ruler, not, not, not the point. Uh, what would their welcome packet be like? How would they welcome people to their to their to their uh, planet? You're muted. That's a very hard question to answer. So I am uh, gonna gonna uh, vamp while I figure out a good answer. Um, <laughs> hi, I'm Aria, Aria underscore Ventures. You can find me online, and I'm playing Terika, um, who. <sighs> 
technically was born into nobility has rejected it um, and is trying to live their own life as they see fit, uh, which is interesting to see how many different ways all of their noble training has already come up so far. That's beside the point. I, the idea, though, of, of them, like, being... I just... <laughs> I'm having such a hard time answering this because first I have to get over the hump of them even like being any sort of mm -hmm. leader of a planet um, mm -hmm. and and where they're at right now uh, with their own headspace. So I think I'm just going to take that a little bit out of the equation because it's a very, there's a lot of um, exceptions in there, I think. Let's say that that happens uh, with the kind of person they are today, not wanting to be in charge. Yeah. I think that their, their welcome packet would have a <laughs> lot of information about surrounding systems. It would have a lot of information um, about tourism opportunities um, within their system for like the they would have like gone to all of the different people and been like, okay, so you have this thing, which is interesting and good. So will you write up a little thing? I want to put it into the welcome packet so people can see and how do they contact you? Um, and so it would be a very like, uh, doesn't at all talk about them. <laughs> it doesn't talk about like the, the hierarchy or anything like that. It's like, oh, hey, w welcome. Here's a lot of information about people and things that you should do while you're here because they're interesting and good and fun. Um, and then if at the very end, it was like, and if you have any kind of problem, you want to go here, they will take care of you. And it would be like a, um, it would be a, a select group of people that they'd put together to, to address grievances and that sort of thing. Oh, that's very wholesome. Hmm. It's a great way of them avoiding being in the spotlight. Yeah. So I feel like we now need to ask Val. Greg, your character is not nobility and has feelings about these things in many ways, some of which you've not shared out loud, although you have stabbed people, not you personally, but your character. So could you say who you are, who you're playing? And if your character is now uh, made a duke of a planet, how do you welcome the people? Sure, sure, yeah. Hi, everybody. My name is Greg. I will be playing Dr. Valentine, Val Morrissey. Um, let's see. How would Val uh, invite people? Okay, so basically, upon arriving in the system, or, you know, where this planet would exist, or this kingdom would exist, you would hear that, uh, you know, instead of a welcome packet, it would just be a burst transmission that would say something to the effect of, if you've made it here, you've been invited. If you've mm. made it here, the past is gone. Your life begins anew. The sun, the rain, the wind and the soil are free. Welcome home. <sighs> That's so lovely. That's so lovely. And I am your GM, Trooper SJP, and uh, I will be taking these antagonists through their uh, next phases. When we last left off, our crew were in jump space on their way, traveling from the Thebus system to the number one system. And today's going to be a bunch of, uh, going to be a bit of, uh, we're going to be sharing data. It'll be a little of uh, data dumping today in, in their own kind of spaceshipping kind of ways. We did a little bit last time, but we'll do a little bit more. And there is a uh, some concerns amongst various members of the crew about other members of the crew. Um, there's been some, many concerns. Concerns about drugs. Concerns about AI, which are not sentient, because that's not possible. Uh, getting into a combat sheet, a uh, suit, and then walking around at night, and then doing things. Uh, physically interacting with the world. people. Some people are concerned about that. I don't know why. Because Sue is just a lovely, lovely AI that is very friendly most of the time to everybody. And uh, some people are skeptical of that, but that's fine. Uh, and they have at this moment um, on the ship, they no longer have any illegal goods. Um, all of their illegal goods have been 
well, traceable illegal goods have been sold. Um, they have um, some people in low birth and suspended animation that need to be awoken when they arrive on this planet to be let free. They have one currently awake passenger, uh, Marcel Rambeau, their latex salesman and also crafter, who's heading on to Assis. They have some freight they're going to drop off here. But other than that, they've got... Uh, their ship is, like, doing pretty well. Their hold's pretty full. They uh, have not pirated anybody yet, or recently, or ever. Sorry, because they're privateers. Uh, everything they've done is completely legal. The crew, at this moment, sort of give a big overview. They are headed to the, uh, the Star of Assis. And actually, I think I can... Uh, show you all what that looks like uh, in our star map, because I have one. Uh, let me let me pull up our star map, because I, I want you to be able to see it. Uh, star map, hello. Hello, star map. And I'm going to need... I'm going to need our star map. Uh, action bar. Traveler. There we go. That's what I'm going to need. Let me bring up our map. That should do it, I believe. So if you are, yeah, here we go. Um, if you are looking on the map, we have, uh, I can also just do it, I think. It might be a little bit easier to do it over here instead. So let me do this. So here's our space map, and this is where the gambler is. They're in the system of number one. This is the little system right here. It's very lovely. Um, they started off in Drynax, which is their home planet. They traveled from... They were given the mission by the king of Drynax to basically travel around the reaches, which is this um, sort of space in between these two empires that are at a cold war with each other, to... Uh, gather up the different planets of this sort of interspace that had once been part of a large empire that is now gone, uh, and try to recruit them all to become part of a new and renewed empire of Drynax. And that was, so they've, uh, they've got a secret diplomatic mission, but to keep it secret, secret, because if people knew what they were doing, they would probably try to stop them. But then also um, become pirates, uh, privateers, with the goal of making there be a piracy problem that when they have, that when the Empire of Drynax is ready to sort of declare itself an empire, they can say, hey, we are an empire, we have all of these planets who've agreed to be part of us, and we, you need us to exist because we can stop this piracy problem, right? So they're, the our antagonists have the tricky line to walk wherein they need to create enough piracy so that there is a problem that they can then solve, which will then sort of encourage these two empires to recognize them as a, as a government but not make the piracy so bad that the Empire or the Aslan just come in and start invading with a navy. So they've got a, a bit of a line to walk, uh, which is to sort of do... And they also need... <laughs> Drynax needs money, uh, and they if they can get that money, they, can, they need the money to help rebuild this empire. So they're around doing diplomacy and also privateering. And our antagonists have decided that what they wanted to do was to travel from uh, Marduk, where they had the very first mission, off to Assis, where one of their crew members, Wesley, was uh, headed. Uh, they want to go down there and like let Wesley do whatever Wesley's going to do over on that planet. They also have been told that they need to go to Torpol and Clark for a mission by the princess of Drynax, who says that Torpol and Clark have been attacked recently by pirates, and they need, uh, it would be a very good opportunity if they could go over there to Torpal and Clark, help those folks out, get goodwill. So there's a piracy problem that they need to address. Uh, there are some other folks who want things out and about, but that's about where they are right now. And they have just landed. They've just emerged out of jump space in the number one system. And I am going to just share a couple of map things for you to note uh, that might be important to think about before we dive into this moment. And that is this place that we're in, these, you can see it on our map. If I zoom out a little bit, you can see the big yellow area is the Aslan Hyrat, which is where the Aslan are humans, and I think of them as like lion people, although they are not. Uh, and this big red area is the Third Imperium, which is a large empire of humans 
um, who have... Both of these empires are very, very large uh, and very exciting. But this whole area that is gray used to be part of the the, the Drendaxian Empire, and before that, the Sindalian Empire, the old Sindalian Empire, which is a couple of thousand, it's like two, three thousand years old, and uh, was very big and important. Uh, great glory. People who think about ancient Rome sort of a thing. Uh, people have a lot of stories and thoughts about it. And there used to be a trade route, which you might be able to see is this sort of green line that goes from right over here to right about there. And that trade route used to be the old, they call it the Dust Belt now, but it was the old Sindalian trade route when Sindal was an actual living, breathing empire. It was a very big, important trade route, but it is the, not that important anymore. Most people who do their trade take other routes. So there's this kind of like little trade route. It's not super big, uh, but it is... Small numbers of trade happens through there now. Uh, most people who want to trade go through other routes. There's a route from about right up there, which is in the Empire, down to here, right? So, so from Fist in the Empire to Tiok in the Aslan High, right? There's a route there that people will take. Usually they'll take that route if they want to do trade between those two places. Uh, people don't really need to go through this area, but people still do. Uh, there are, however, a little bit of trickinesses that sort of break this route into half. And that is um, spaceships have are rated with drive, jump drives. So each one of these hexes is a parsec and you have to use a, a jump drive that will take you through that space uh, because you would just never be able to make that distance with a regular drive. And um, you can be rated one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. although nobody has that level of technology for a 10. Uh, I would say your average standard ship has a jump two drive. Uh, there are some special, highly specialized ships that have jump three or four, uh, but those are very expensive and very specialized, and most people do not have them. Um, your um, courier ships, like the, the very small little mail ships, these X-boats, all they do is they sort of take messages from one place to the next. Those are sort of jump four. But most things are two, although if you're not as uh, technologically advanced, you might have a jump one ship. So... To just note this, I'm going to move the gambler off for a moment. There is, oop, uh, if you're starting from Floridan and you're taking this sort of route, there's a little, you can move from here to here. There's a bunch of little jump one planets. There's a bit of a gap between Janus uh, and uh, 291.540, which then means if you're a jump one ship uh, culture or system, you're not going to be able to make it past that. But there are all these little ones between Janus and uh, Tick Tick and Assis. They're all one jump uh, planet. So there's quite a lot of trade in this little route between Janus and Assis. There's quite a bit of trade there. Ace is a planet, if you see the little orange circle, you're not supposed to go to because it's got some problems. Um, it is interdicted. It doesn't even really have a, a, a starport there. And then number one is a pretty crappy planet as well. But to get from there to number one is a two, two parsec jump. And then you've got another two parsec jump from Thebes to Ogmar or Marduk, and then another two parsec jump from Agma Marduk to Torpol. So there are a bunch of these two parsec jumps, which means that from the other side, that trade route is going to be only slightly ships that have a bigger jump drive. So the trade's not going to be as robust. So this place is a little bit lost in certain ways. Uh, but they're on their way to SC, which is going to be closer to us, like a slightly more uh, robust trade route. Um, now, robust trade routes tend to mean a bit more better security. These sort of places where they're at, number one, Thebes, Norcom, Agma, Torpol, they don't have as good security because the, the trade is not as often, and which means there are more opportunities for piracy, perhaps. I mean, it's a place where pirates happen. So we'll just kind of like think about that for a moment as just a, a bit of where they are. And they're heading off to Assis, and I suppose other places they might need to know um, is that, let me put the gambler back over there on number one. There's a planet up here called Thieve, and that is a planet, it's one of the only other planets that's very friendly to them. Phoebus is currently as well. Um, and that one is known as a scum of, a hive of scum and villainy, sort of a pirate planet. They've not been there, but they do have, uh, they do know a contact there that was a contact of the pirate queen that they murdered. Uh, so they've got some stuff up there in Thieve they could see. They've got, they're headed towards Assis. They've got planets back the other direction where they came. They can go and do some missions, and who knows what else they will find. But 
for my crew, as we return, I need you all to make, uh, I need to ask you a question just for clarification purposes that I'm going to note. <clears throat> and then I need you all to make a roll. You have emerged from jump space. Emerging from dump space, as I mentioned before, is a moment of uh, going from nothing to everything. And it's like a very intense moment. And everybody usually, usually have all hands on deck when you emerge from jump space. It's like when the alarm goes off that you're getting out of jump space, everybody goes to their duty stations. And you usually lock your alive, uh, awake customers, pardon me, awake customers in their rooms just in case. Um, oh, and I would just like to know... The first time. Uh, where is everybody's duty station? I want to just make sure I have it written down and I am certain of where everybody is. Uh, I know that Tarek is in the pilot seat. Um, yes. I am probably waiting for the packet. Um, and I think a lot of my... Um, uh, I, I like to imagine uh, Severance in his room with his tablet... Um, and like Ooh. a mug of ale and candlelight like the Gandalf looking for um, any sort of information about the ring. I feel like that is like what he does when he is uh, coming out of jump space. It's sort of relaxing to him, but it's also mm -hmm. something that he's mm -hmm. practiced in doing. Um, mm -hmm. So he's waiting for the packet. He's waiting for data. He's waiting mm -hmm. uh, to see what kind of papers he needs to modify mm -hmm. to send out. Yeah to um, usually the station, but there isn't really yep. one that we would just drop because the station we know is on the island, the number yep. one island on this entire planet. I figured that out during the break or while, while I was, uh, my camera was off. I went, oh, wait a minute. Um, so I'm proud of that. Uh, and, uh, but yeah, so I think that's probably what he's doing. He's just sort of maybe sitting there. Maybe there is a, like an empty mug of what we mm -hmm. had for that uh, breakfast. Um, mm -hmm. a couple of episodes ago, maybe the rim yeah. of that mug is starting to dry and calcify some of the, uh, coffee or caffeine or whatever, whatever we're using as the substitute mm -hmm. is starting to dry around the ring there, but he still goes mm -hmm. to, uh, sip the swill as he's sort of, uh, holding his, uh, tablet up and, uh, sort of looking through the paperwork and things. Mm. Um, and that's his station is like his office and his like in his um, office black market office like his black market paperwork area yeah. is in his room with a tap with his tablet and maybe multiple tablets like strewn papers yeah. like like yeah. um yeah like um uh what, what, like um burner tablets you know like burner cell phones yeah like he has a bunch of these like jailbroken <laughs> burner tablets that he probably uses to uh spoof and make uh uh, shitty paperwork. But yeah, that, that's it. That's what he's doing. I love that. And uh, if you would, um, Val, where are you when you come out of... Well, let me just say... Um, uh, yes, Val, where are you? Well, Val used to be the co-pilot, but I mm. have a sneaking suspicion that somebody else is a better pilot than Val and probably has taken his spot on the bridge. Is it, Lindy, is that oh, correct? No. I, I, mean, I got, I I got a couple points in pilot. Uh, oh, no. So, yeah, Val will be in two. his room I don't and know just that's don't you. worry about him stewing about anything or becoming no. a pilot. <laughs> I will you say. Don't see any of that. Right. You, yeah. you don't see any of the effects on this type of ostracization on him. Yeah, you, you don't. You, yeah. you never fine, will. You know? We never will see. I will it. say I don't have any astrogation, so if you need astrogate to get back into system, you'd probably be a better choice. And I will be on gunner, but I can co-pilot because uh, I do have points of pilot, uh, co-pilot, mechanic, I, gunner. I mean, there's a comm station. It'd, it'd be up to there's Terica. There's a comm astrogation station. It, I would. I would leave it up to Terica. Quint would too. So I think that would be interesting to play in game mm -hmm. a little bit because i don't know that terica would just like if quint was right there and quint sat down i think terica would just like but if there was some sort of um well. uh on the bridge itself is different from like when we've been co-piloting anything but the gambler <sighs> right the gambler is different than everything else but well so i feel like we're gonna have to hold off on that one because I'm going to find out where people know where they're sitting, and then we're going to find out where everyone where everyone else sits. So we know where Tarek is sitting. We know where mm -hmm. Severance is sitting. 
We'll just hold off on Val and Quint for a moment. Quint is going to uh, sit where they're told because they don't know their spot fully on the ship yet because no one's explained it in clear terms. <laughs> I don't think right. anybody actually knows. Like, I think... <laughs> yep. I think uh, I can uh, fill multiple spots. I can be the Marine. I can be the Gunner. I can be your mechanic. I can all right, be yeah, we went through this with the payment last time. Yeah. And we mm-hmm, didn't get an mm-hmm. answer. <laughs> And then I was like, I should be paid more because I can fill multiple spots. So yeah, then... like, okay, 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 yeah, me too. <laughs> uh huh, uh huh. Uh, so let's just go with some easy stuff then. Wesley is down in the engine room. Now, I will note that Wesley does not have the engineering jump drive skill, so he cannot um, initiate jump from down there, which means somebody else has to be down there when you're going to go into jump. But he's there just in case. Like to like fix stuff. Down, he's down in the hold in case he can mechanic some stuff. Uh, he tends to do that when we're in that space. So I just uh, I just said where Wesley is. Uh, I feel like uh, we have got some big questions here. Uh, the Harlock. I, the Harlock's on the bridge because Har- the Harlock often is needed for comms. Uh, so I know the Harlock is on the bridge, probably in one of the sort of probably in the captain's chair actually. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think Terrence feels most at ease when the Harlock is in the captain's chair. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, you, this is uh, very exciting. I'm gonna say. Uh, so we do have someone else on the bridge as well. Like you have, uh, you have your your good friend with a knife who's on one of the two gunner spots. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, so that gives us everybody but Val and Quint. And so the <laughs> alarm goes off. Um, oh, sorry. Uh, Evan, of course, is not going to be on the bridge because Evan is the steward. So Evan, when the alarm goes off, Evan makes sure that all passengers are in their rooms, right? Make sure that they're locked in. And Evan probably goes to his room uh, because got to get ready for that thing. So Evan is in his room after making sure that all the other passengers are set. So let's have this. Let's find out how this happens. The alarm goes off. Um, there are sort of uh, alarms blaring. Everybody sort of moved to their duty stations. Uh, Evan sends off the alert saying, you know, all passengers, uh, we are coming out of jump space. Uh, so I will be locking you into your rooms. Um, don't worry about it. We will let you know where we are after we take account of our surroundings. Boom, boom, boom. And everybody else hustles to where they want to go, which leaves Val and also Quint up there on the bridge and the co-pilot seat right there next to Terika. And I will hand it to you because that seems the most uh, awkward. <laughs> uh and Terika just like grabs the she, they're they're just like on the controls um and they're starting, you know, the moves to move in. And I think they don't look over to the co-pilot seat until it hits a point where like you would expect the co-pilot to be stepping in to tap the burners or something like that. Um and at that point, when they realize that no one's there, they're gonna look up um to where Val is at and give him a sort of confused look for a long uh, uh, Just one second. Just, uh, uh, Val would get or, there, but would Quint already be there? Uh, I would They're say both because, in the room. Yeah, I, Quint would have moseyed a bit more than typical because doesn't really know where they're supposed to be. So I was hoping maybe this would run into someone along the way. Like, hey, you're supposed to be over here. So, yeah. Would have would have moseyed a bit. Uh, well, so either get there at the same time, or I'd be g- just after you. Let's do same time just to make it real fucked. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> I, want I would the not have gotten there first. Yes, the same time. We're just like, oh. He um, would walk up and wouldn't say, but would give you a look like, "What the fuck are you doing here?" <laughs> and I, I think uh, Quint it doesn't would, say that, of course. Right. Yeah, 
I wish Rocket was here because she would totally turn to, to the Harlock and be like, so where do you want me to be? Where am I? It's my station. Where am I supposed to be at? Uh, and I so, but, so in the absence of Rocket, I think we just go, I am not entirely certain which uh, station I'm supposed to be at, so I am here at your, everyone's disposal. Uh, we probably should have covered this before we got out of Java space, but it just never came up. So you're a pilot, right? I can be gunner, marine, pilot, or mechanic. He would uh, simply present the co-pilot's station. Oh, look at Terrica, because... Uh, Terrica would pilot. like... Tenrico <laughs> would look at Val for like a long minute. Yeah, I could use a co-pilot uh, if you uh, if you if you want if you want, and they'll look at that. They'll say that part to Quint. Okay. Uh, sure, I, wherever I need it, and oh, yeah. I will just oh, would you down the like, oh, finally orders, and then go, <laughs> and then and... just. Val would turn around and the, go back to work. The, the sensor uh, station is open. He doesn't do sensors. <laughs> <laughs> I, okay. I don't think I have sensors. So. <laughs> I, so I have funny. sensors. I have a <laughs> hodgepodge of things. I do too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, you know, you some got to do those sensors and astrogation. So as you emerge, and I uh, just want to be very clear, does Val go back to his room? Well, now, now, correct me if I'm wrong, astrogation is not something we need to do here. It's pre-planning for a okay. jump, correct? So I don't need uh -huh. to do anything. So there's no call for an astro navigator at this particular moment. No, not unless something happens, you know, yeah. Oh, well, I'm sure they'll let me know. <laughs> yeah, so he's okay. going back to work. Okay, cool. <laughs> I was just wondering, it's not awkward. Uh, and as the, as the sort of, uh, as you sort of emerge from this bubble, right, into this new system, and in all of the bright, blinding whiteness of the jump bubble, the kind of iridescent colors sort of go immediately to black, and then the sensors just start pinging sounds, all the sounds of like, ping, 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 like as you get hits for everything, I'm going to need a sensor roll uh, to make sense of all that is around you. And one moment. Mm hmm. I didn't mean there to are. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, you do get some bonuses for the gambler, of course, because uh, the gambler is a, a very impressive sort of ship. Uh, I wrote it down somewhere, but you get like a plus. Got military grade sensors. Oh no, or do you have advanced sensors? Your ship is very, very impressive. Oh, I, I wrote it down. I know. And I, I yeah. appreciate you recognizing this because so many people talk about how run down it is. And They're frankly, advanced. that is They're advanced. just disrespectful. Yeah. yeah, advanced with, yeah. The, with a countermeasure suite. I don't know if that's... That would help you, yeah. So you don't get a bonus for that. Uh, but that is true. But you do have the military countermeasure suite, which is important. Uh, but they help you when you're doing um, electronic warfare, you know, to Ooh. stop being found. Uh, uh -huh. So if you would, please. Do I add anything to my sensor role here? Uh, just it's, you're going to be using your electronic sensors. Oh, okay. Nothing added for the fact that the... The advanced gambler sensors. has advanced sensors. Nope, because that's a zero bonus. If you had lesser sensors, oh, okay. you'd have minuses. Like oh, most ooh. civilian ships. Yeah. yeah. Uh, most no, civilian ships you. are going to be rolling lower than that. Do you know what I mean? Like, if you were on mm. a, a regular... See, I just like to let you know that if... You know, I just want you to know because... You might want to rob people who are in regular ships one day. So I just kind of want to let you know how good your ship is because i feel like sometimes you don't know um 
Do you know, I think oh, it's quick important. Yeah, we, have a, we have a pretty, yeah, we Absolutely. only, our baseline is this ship. <laughs> so, yeah. We're still, we're still set up to cloak, use some of our cloaking ability to cloak the stealth pilot, the stealth fighter on the bottom, right? It, it just yes. looks like a piece of our cargo bay. Okay, perfect. Yeah, but it's you're like going to have to turn that net. on now. Yeah, and you have to turn that on once you come out, right? Because you need all that energy when you're in yeah, jump space, right? right? So you turn that on. Terry so would definitely out. do that. They would... They, they would protect their their little tiny chip. Uh, and that is a part of our. What sheet is that? That is a part of our. Uh, it's on your. Um, it's on your. It's on the the ship part of it. So as you are running about, you come out and you rolled a nine, which is good. There are some. I'm going to say that there are some bonuses that you're getting and some minuses that you're getting right now that you don't know about. Uh, but I wouldn't worry about that at the. <laughs> moment because uh let me tell you how this works you need to beat an eight that's your sort of standard difficulty for most things unless there's something else going on uh, and what happens is that there might be ships like yours for example who might have uh stealth technology or might be hiding uh, um, or might be, you know, might have a stealth drive or like, a, you know, things like that. And they would have, they would make your heart, your role more difficult. You know what I mean? Uh, so, but also, so whether you recognize things would be, would depend. Uh, what I will say is, and also like if you're running active sensors, it's easier to find you. There are all sorts of ways. Now, if I remember correctly, you were not jumping into this space in a stealthy way. Uh, you do have a stealth jump drive, which means it's harder for people to recognize you when you come in. Just as a thing. Uh, you're hard to you're hard to see. So the first things first are stars and planets, right? As you start making sense of all the data, you're like, oh, okay, there are stars, there are planets. Okay, there are how many planets, how many star systems, what do we got? You kind of the big large bodies. And then all then you sort of notice anything with like a a signature, uh, like active comms, asteroids. You kind of like are noting all of the big things. Now, the thing is, it's tricky, is it's always tricky to know whether or not something is an asteroid or a ship that's powered down or a ship with a stealth drive, right? It's always hard to, to know. Coming out of jump, by the way, is very loud. And when people, when ships oh. come out of jump, it's, oh, it's loud. Everybody knows, like you, everybody knows you've come out of jump when you come out of jump. So anybody who's going to be a pirate is going to notice it right away, except that you have a stealth jump drive, which means you can come out of stealth out of jump without people necessarily knowing that you did, or it'll be very hard for them to tell that you, you say came loud, out of jump. Do you mean like the narrative, narratively loud, like electronics and shit, or is it like yes, literally loud? It's electronics. Okay. No, okay, no, it's cool. electronically loud. So it's like there was a disturbance uh, in the force and we're all like... <laughs> Oh, a sh okay, a ship. Yeah, I mean, the, the yeah, jump okay. bubble collapses and like time space just goes whoosh, right? And there's like a big yeah. like flash. It is, it's it. very flashy when you come out of jump space. The so most ships and a green flash happens space. and we're like, oh, a green uh, ship yeah. come out of jump space. Yeah, okay. Yes, it's pretty obvious most of the time, unless you have a stealth jump drive, which is very expensive and most people don't have it. You have one. So uh -huh. when you come out of jump space, you're quite subtle. You also, your ship itself is also has got electronic countermeasures and stealth coating. You are very, very stealthy. So if you come out of jump or are flying around, um, most people are not going to know. Uh, your maneuver drive is not stealth. So that, once you start flying under your regular power, you're, it's gonna be a bit more obvious, but you're hard to notice. Unlike normal ships, who are less hard to notice. Um, just keep that in mind. So, as you are reaching out your eyes, checking your sensors, trying to find out if there's anything that might be um, there or interesting. Other elements are, do you have active sensors on or passive sensors on? Those are also things like, you know, what's going on with, with your, your IFF, your transponder. Transponders, if people ping you, then they are going to ping back unless you turn it off, in which case then people will not notice. There are all sorts of different ways in which you can be stealthy when you arrive or etc. But as you make sense of your 
the space around you. Start charting. Like, one of the first things you have to do is try to figure out, like, where are we going? Like, where exactly did we land? Uh, are we where we think we are? How far away is the planet? Where is that high port? What do we have going on? Like, there's all those sorts of things you have to do. And as you sort of emerge, I'm going to tell you a couple of things that your sensors alert you to amongst everything. One of which is going to be, I'm going to, what's the word? Uh, I'm going to bury the lead here for a moment because I feel like that's great. I have, I'm shocked. I have a, a, a little meta thing that we should worry about. Mm. Um, and, I, and I think it matters that we talk about it now before you continue. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh, get, get Please. Uh, I think it is... Um, we are using the holographic hull, right? To to yes. to stealth. So we only have seventy five. Well, to to, dis uh, to to disguise your um, your stealth ship. Yeah, yeah, your yeah, drop yeah. Ship. We only have seventy five power left. It costs a hundred. So we need to start. We need to start managing some other other uh, power. So I was thinking the jump drive is powered down, but what we have to have the yes. M drive up to be able to move. But we can jump yeah. to half basic ship si um, systems yeah. and oh yeah. shoot, that leaves us five off. We could power down weapons. I don't want to power down yeah, sensors. Weapons. Yep. Yeah, okay. let's pull weapons off. So you've pulled We've weapons off. We've got the offline. world's greatest gunner with us. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> I think well, Corinne. you know. If the weapons are powered down, then you can't use them. It's cool. So, let's just board you... them. I'll be the weapon. Oh yeah, sweet, it's right there. Dope. Okay, cool. Thank you. Yep, just right. it. as you were, a trooper. Yes, I realized these things are important. To stealth that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because you don't have. That's a very expensive. Uh, and a holographic hull is very expensive, right? Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Uh, Somewhere that's mm -hmm. not a pirate system, I don't mind exposing it but in a pirate yeah, i think system. we should probably use it yeah. uh, i feel like you probably don't want non-pirate systems to see this at all because uh, you should not have a ship like it. that because mm -hmm. it's imperial mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. pirate systems don't care as much they can see i don't want to give this system any more reasons to put us into prison there's they have enough reasons for that already holographic no. hole isn't visual is it no it's it just visual, looks like the bottom of our it's visual, not sensors. That's what it was. Okay. Yes. Okay. So sensors we still read. Got it. Yes. Unless we power but, it down. It's not. The, yeah. Not. The little ship isn't powered up right now. The little one. So. Mm -hmm. It's, it's just held on with our clamp. Yeah. So it, it won't uh -huh. pop up on sensors. But if we unplug the mainframe, therefore it wouldn't ever show. It wouldn't uh. ever bounce back information. Well, it won't because it's a s illegal stealth vessel and it doesn't have the things that ping, which All is right, part of why we don't anyway, have it. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Okay, never mind. Sweet. <laughs> we don't have to worry about sensors. That's the part yeah. we actually have to worry about is that it won't pop up yeah, on yeah, sensors. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And, and then if people it was will see for it. us, it would still be stealth. So that's great. Mm -hmm. Great. Perfect. Never mind. All right. Sorry. I so work. I have brought up a, uh, a system map for you. This oh, is the number one system. Um, and you can see it right there. I've given you, you've got the primary star, and then you've got 11 sort of bodies. You've got these two gas giants and some ice worlds, right? Uh, various places. And the, and the, these, each of these bodies also have things circling them. The very first one, which is under the zero position, which is a very large gas giant. Now, please note there are only two large gas giants in this system that you could use to refuel in. Uh, and there's this one large gas giant, which is the one that's closest to the star. and the farthest planet circling that large gas giant is number one. Now, if you notice, I put a big dark line said called jump point right there. I need to talk to you about jump masking. This is important because I'm going to tell you a piece of data that you're going to want to know after I explain this to you. Which one's number so, one? Uh, number one is First right column here. at the bottom. Oh, thank you. Yes. Uh, let me put this to the map layer. Uh, Basically, right here. where one of the moons of Jupiter is number one, but Jupiter yes. would be first in the solar system rather than seven. So, yeah. Absolutely. This is correct. So, about mm -hmm. this, there is a thing that you cannot jump 
within the 100 diameter range of a large body, of a large gravity well. So when you jump into a place, you're always going to be, people always try to get as close as they can, but, uh, and you, you just can't, like you cannot jump within that space because you will be pulled out of jump space early, right? If you try to jump in closer to that diameter area, you just get pulled out early. Uh, jumping from within 100 diameter space is very dangerous. You risk misjumps. Uh, you can try to jump early if you need to, like if you're being chased by pirates, but it is very dangerous. People try not to. They would rather get to that 100 diameter line and then jump out rather than um, jumping within. But, you know, danger, danger, as it were. So most planets are not that big. And the 100 diameter sort of range, the line, the jump line for most planets, there's probably going to be something anywhere between like three to six hours. Like some of them are like, depending on how fast your ship is, how big your maneuver drive is, it might only take you a couple of hours, you know, three, four hours to get from there to there. Sometimes a little bit faster. Um, and really good planets um, with like good robust trade systems have a really nice planet with a pretty like, it's a pretty decent jump line size. You just fly in there. It's it's really, it's nice. You know what I mean? It's easy peasy. Um, there are some planets, however, that is not the case, where um, the jump line is not that easy peasy. It's actually kind of, well, it's what we would call they are jump masked. And what a jump mask is, is that the planet itself is within the 100 diameter range of something bigger. And so that you cannot jump close to the planet because that other thing is has a much bigger gravity well. And for example, uh, the number one system, there's a massive unnamed star right there. And number one is really close to that star. And so the star's 100 diameter range is much, much wider than the, the 100 diameter range of number one or the gas giant that it surrounds. So if you want to jump into this system, where you jump is at the 100, at the jump line for the star itself, which is that jump point that I sort of put there for you. Um, let me put that on the map. So right, right here. So what does that mean for you? And why do you care about that? Well, that means, A, everybody's jumping to that same line. Basically, la di da di everybody is going to be there. And the time it takes for you to travel from the jump line to number one is not going to be three or four or five hours. It is going to be a much longer. And this is what you can sort of realize once you actually sort of jump into the space uh, as you sort of get your bearing and see where you're at. Uh, you realize that it's going to take you a much, much longer time to fly to number one than it in a normal system or a system where it's not jump masked. And it's going to take you, and I will also note this is important because you are not a regular ship. Like most regular trade ships have a maneuver one drive. That's as fast as they can go. You have a maneuver six drive, which means it's going to be much, much faster for you to get there than, let's say, a trade ship with lots of cargo that might have stuff in it. Like if they wanted to escape a pirate, it would take a longer time. Or if people were trying to go from that planet to rescue them, it's going to take a much longer time to get there. It's going to be about 24 hours for you to fly from this <laughs> jump point Pirate queen. to number one. <laughs> it will take about... You all, with a very, very fast drive, a very fast drive, will take you about 24 hours to get from this jump point to number one. So... Trooper, I'm, Trooper, I'm going to interrupt just real quick just to bring please. the audience up to speed that this is a, a pitch for us to use that maneuverability to pirate these larger ve vessels. Um, I will share what we talked about in the green room that remember that the lead in for this system was there is uh, a, a young queen who rules the place and likes to kill pirates. So I'm going to pass. That's true. Or at least vote to pass. I'm... 
Uh, it's true. There uh, is a pirate queen who likes to kill pirates. And if we would like to have that planet on the side of Drynax, then uh, we need to make sure that, at the very least, if we're doing any pirating, nobody can see us. Um, you're pretty far away. Um, you would calculate that it would take you, you all, because you're very fast, will take you about 14 hours to get from the jump line huh. to the planet. But if you are a normal trade ship, it will take you, with a maneuver one drive, it will take you 34 hours to travel from the jump line to that planet. So, and I'm going to just point this out because this is a thing to note. When you are jump masked like this, by the way, Drynax is also jump masked by its star. Um, people don't want to trade with you. Do you know what I mean? Like, because that is a long, mm. long distance to go and fly in from that jump line. So planets that are jump masked don't tend to have as good trade. Um, this planet does not even have a, a high port, which means none of the big ships can... What a tempting offer. ...can land on this... Uh, can, can, can dock. Uh... Also, large ships that are not streamlined cannot scoop fuel from a gas giant either. So if you are a large trading ship and you jump into this space, you cannot scoop fuel and you cannot land to get refueled. They might have a shuttle service to bring you fuel, but most likely what's going to happen is you're going to hope that you have extra fuel and just jump right through, right? So jump to this line and then just keep moving and not stay. So this is going to be a planet that, because it does not have a high port, is not going to be well... Uh, serviced by trade, which might not be so great for it as a planet. Also, uh, it's going to be a place where pirates might really enjoy being. Uh, more on that in a second, because uh, I had that second point I wanted to tell you. Uh, because if you're jumping out far out of the um, out of the range of that system, that means that system's security forces are going to take a long time to get there to save anybody who might be attacked by pirates. Uh, so it's a prime spot for pirates because anybody that's jumping through this place is probably a big enough drive that they can probably, they probably have some good stuff and you're kind of stuck. On the plus side, it's one of the reasons why nobody knows that dry naxes are still happening because it's jump mast and nobody's going to go there. But if somebody did want to invade the system with a bunch of like naval ships, that plan is going to know that those ships have arrived and it's going to have more time to... Um, prepare than if when you jump in, it's only like two hours before you get to them, right? So there's a way in which being a jump max, mass planet helps you ward off invasion, but it sucks for trade. Pretty good for pirates, though. <laughs> Would you like to know the second thing that you notice? Yes. Yes. There is a ship that is lurking at the 100 diameter area. The ship is does not have its transponder on, because so you, you did not get a ping. Mm. Uh, it is not powered up. It looks like it might just be an asteroid if you were not paying attention, or just some space debris. But you rolled way better than they did, uh, with all of your bonuses and etc. You see lurking at that one hundred diameter space a ship the ship itself let's say it is well you'd have to do active scans right to sort of get it uh, but i believe you do have your active scans up so that's fine um it is like a, a scout ship which you know would be like in style which you know is like pretty well armed it does not have a very huge hold but uh it is of a style that, I don't know, pirates might enjoy. Uh, they might find that sort of level of that type of ship to be a, a useful one, you know, if you wanted to go and um, attack ships that arrive in system. However, there is no indication that they noticed that you arrived at all um, in any way, because you are, after all, exceedingly stealthy, and you also have a stealth drive. So it does not look like this ship knows that you has has 
pinged you, has recognized that you've arrived. Um, but there is a ship that's just out there lurking. I'm sure they're lurking for no bad <laughs> reason. But there's one there. Uh, yeah, sure. No, no bad reason whatsoever. Um, I mean, we could always reach out to them and ask if they want help transporting their cargo. <laughs> Just lurking. So when they're they're in this lurking place, or like we from can send out a help signal to see if that makes us good bait, and then Ooh. Uh, murder them. They will be well armed if they're a pirate ship. It's okay, we can turn off something and get we could turn off mean, a lot of. Well, we could get an R style ship yeah. <laughs> and, and board them. <laughs> we do literally have like a cutter thing to like let us get into ships now. This is true. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> uh, sorry, I just saw what you posted in the green room. Um, I mean, it just seems like it's very nefarious them lurking in a system where the, that is yeah. prone to pirates. Um, on the yes. other hand, they could absolutely be like, if if she's so against pirates, these could, could be, be her people. Yeah, hanging so out. That's why a help signal could be could be good or something. Be like, oh, I so will us. just note something. Uh, something is broken. You have just jumped into the system, which means you do not have any jump fuel, which means you could not jump away. That Ooh. tends to be the case when ships arrive in a new system. Unless, you know, like a big ship might have double jump fuel for this place because it's kind of a, a bad gap. But uh, a regular ship who jumped in right now, like you, well, you know, would not have fuel to jump out if they were attacked. So if they were to attack you, you couldn't jump away. You could try to flee to go to number one, but it's like 34 hours to get there if you were a regular ship. Yeah, but, but we are not. fast. You are fast. It would th be 13 hours of them attacking you. Uh, we see them. If they could keep up. <laughs> we see them. Are they close enough to us for us to be like, look how close they are? Like, would they be able um, to get a read? Visually? Yeah. They've not They've not noticed you. They're like, you're at a pretty Generally. decent distance. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, everybody. So what if we take the stealth ship like you were suggesting, we sneak up on them, if possible, get onto the exterior of the ship. Love it. Uh work with their life support and pump in, I don't know, a pound or two of psychedelic side drugs. And then wait, wait. wait. Do they work and if you're then... not psionic though? Yes. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cause yeah. It'll they, they, they were inoculated. Yeah. 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 If, if you don't have side, if you don't have psi abilities, you get them. Yeah. You can pump um... them full of all sorts of stuff or how big is that ship? Uh, Trooper, just out of curiosity, like how many people would, Typically, man, a ship of that size. You don't know. It's a 200 D ton ship, which is about the same size as yours. Um, okay. I will note so about your, your stealth drop ship. I will note about your stealth yeah. drop ship. Mm -hmm. That ship is very vulnerable to being destroyed by weapon fire. Generally uh -huh. speaking, a if you're going to be doing like naval operations, a ship like that, you'd want to be engaging a ship with a larger ship and then have it come in, like while it's being distracted, right? Mm -hmm. Come in on it. Uh, because if it notes you, it will shoot you, and that ship does not have armor to handle no. being shot by a, a large ship. We do have enough people who can pilot, and we do have a big ship and a little ship. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, uh, I, I know that you were... Go on. No, no, you go, bud. You go. I know that you were joking about the side drugs, but hear me out. <laughs> I work. also uh, okay. am on board with but the side hear drug me out. What if... And this is like, I'm not sure this is me out of character speaking meta wise in character. Um, <laughs> what if we, um, what if we flag them down, talk to them, get them on board for helping us with what we're doing, because I am an admiral, uh, but also let's 
why, why don't we think about putting the side drugs in number one's only station? And that could be enough of a distraction for us to actually pirate everybody that's waiting outside. <laughs> and then we can go, oh, what happened? And then we can come back and save the day. The thing with that plan is there's a lot of people waiting and piracy does take time. Many ships would be able to jump away before we'd be able to pirate everyone. But they're like and I don't know if we have enough drugs for all scoops. of number one. Oh, yeah, and also, also Derek is not going to agree to a Greg's plan that loses all of our side drugs. Greg's thinking about it. For no reason. I will also no, just no, no. Note Greg was thinking that... about how I offered a fly swatter alternative and you said, I'll raise you a nuke. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. I will okay. also note that that's why I that love none of you <laughs> have, I know I love it. None of you have actually taken a dose of the side drugs. You've only been around the side drugs when they were exposed to air. Nobody knows what happens if you actually take a dose. That is true. Yeah, we, can put it in, no. we can put it in the pirate's water. I'm sure we can have access to that on the outside because that's how they yeah. rebuild it whenever they. Right, or the planet is water. <laughs> Oh, right, right. Fly swatter nuke. Fly swatter nuke. We want the planet on our side. Pirates are good pillaging because they won't get us in trouble when we're trying to recruit a whole Drynaxian. Listen, Quint doesn't yeah. care. I'm saying this as a Lindy. Terika would care. Terika would care about getting the planet on Drynax's side. They would not be okay with a plan to to hurt the planet at all. But all they right. would be okay with going after pirates. So if we can confirm that these guys are pirates, ooh, I know how we can confirm that. What are their what does their log look like? They're not paying um, anything. It's turned off. off. Oh, that's how that's their a pretty good confirmation. Oh, well, they're then they're pirates. pirates. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, what what if they're Hold privateers on. with a letter of mark from number Okay, one? this would be real time. fucking bad. This would be good. What's one of those things uh, where it's like I thought maybe us being bait, what like having the big ship be bait could yeah. be good yeah. because then we could be like surprise weapons and we have our little surprise, stealth ship coming from the other yeah, side. Right? Yeah, if you I act like you're this. limping in a knee, that's perfect pirate bait. And we could okay. drop the, we could have the side drugs on the um, stealth ship. And just drop it behind. In case we're worried about if we're if we're worried about the side the, the 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 stealth ship blowing up, I have an alternative. Um, if, if I Those we power get suits, relative, yeah. If we get relatively close enough, my suit can handle Atmo or out of Atmo. So, mm -hmm. um, and the side jump. drugs aren't a lot. I can Hot drop. I can Iron Man this shit maybe, <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe, and take him over and be on the outside while you guys distract and fight i have another I idea fight doing anything anyway it's true, it's true. Me um, i will I just note something <laughs> for the record <laughs> yes um the harlock i do not think will be really excited about getting those drugs out because those drugs are very dangerous um, valuable but I feel like if you would like to make this crew of pirates all psionically powerful before you attack them, I think you should absolutely give them those drugs. That sounds, one, really fun. Uh, and, and two, very dangerous. I'm sorry, I think we don't know they're pirates, pardon me. They might not be pirates. You. How dare you? Yeah, me. because you just uh, turn off pirates. your transponder for funsies. Well, they okay. could be try to be pirate catchers. That is the other maybe, alternative. Maybe they have it's a true. sensitivity to uh, transponder. Which is why I think bait rather than a forward attack is a good idea. And well, well, like ignore them. <laughs> okay, well, okay. Well, I feel them. like <laughs> we nice already picked thread. up the fly swatter. It's fly swatter or nuke at this point. Like, I don't. <laughs> I think ignoring them is out the window. I think we passed that. I like the other idea, I have another idea, which is, um, which I said I like it and I didn't even say it yet. I have another idea, which is we speak with them and we pay them with something valuable. I don't know, side drugs, but it could be anything. Um, uh, really, literally, it could be anything that we have that's valuable. It doesn't need to be side drugs, but my first thought was side drugs. We pay them to establish some sort of network um, less than 100 diameters from the star in the other direction. Hear me out. We now have okay. a over here. We have uh, let's say the light over here is the star, right? We have uh -huh. 
we have number one, and then we have like the hundred whatever jump point. What if we just like made a, an established something, these people could do it, or uh, a nest or a haven where it is easier for us to get to the jump point and back than it would be for security to get to the jump point. Therefore, this pirate nest managed by these people would then if it's a nest. hold down that that threshold, that border, and then we come in later and save the day. Does that make sense? You you want to create you want to create a pirate haven? Yes. That you <laughs> sublet to these pirates. Yes. I feel like it, we're not going to be well, able. Okay. to. Handsome pirate <laughs> queen. Yes. Uh-huh. Um, there might be better take... systems for us to do that in. Uh, I'm just going to throw that out there. Number one. Privateer nest. One. Thank you. Um, privateer nest. Thank privateer you. Nest. Well, they would be Thank privateers, you. would they? Uh. We can also give them oh, okay. the stealth ship, and they do it. No, absolutely not. I know, I'm not. <laughs> absolutely not. But if we did, then they <laughs> have never see it again. Literally, because of stealth ship. But then, <laughs> we, well, we would be able to track it. Let's just say we we put in measures that we would know where it is. They're borrowing it. Blah blah blah. We sublet them to have the stealth ship. They can just reap havoc here. Wreak havoc here. Whatever the hell that term is. Wreak havoc mm-hmm. here. And then we. Come back later and stop them. That sounds First like a off. really good way to get either the Aslan or the Empire to get an invite in to take over the system because piracy is such a big issue. You want to keep your piracy on a small in. enough level. That's what Trinax is and supposed but the, to do that. But, the, but you see, the thing is timing. We are traveling around and doing things. Will we be able to guarantee that we are back in order to save them before someone else does? Also, including no, that's how we one. drop off all of our people and we stop well, doing this currying stuff and we get back to what we're doing. <laughs> But but also if if you can convince Terika to give that ship to somebody else, yeah, 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 yeah. then uh, by all means. Also stop I'm not saying it's impossible, point. but I'm uh, like it's. Right. <laughs> We're going to need a lot of luck for that role. Cord, you do realize you proposed the 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 plot of uh, the Incredibles, right? Where you solve <laughs> the world problem and then you solve it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's that's, that's who we're playing. <laughs> we're playing traveler incredibles um but yeah that could be cool um but also that involves you know, we involves also want ship. number one on our side i, I have anything, everything anything to do with it i would be so mad it's temporarily these pirates on our side and then we fuck over the pirates i think we just fuck over we the have pirates what if yeah. is there a way that we could hide and wait for them to make their move if they make their Ooh, move pirating the somebody else, yeah. Okay, yeah, then yeah, we yeah, come in and okay. take them out as the heroes of the day. That was my 100% plan behind B. this. I like that plan too. Because we, we can like also, heroes. and we can turn on our holographic hull so we could sit like right behind them if we also turn off our sensors in our holographic hull. And then if anyone asks about it, we can be like, oh, we were just we were just watching pirates to make we knew this system. And then we can also use that excuse for other systems. We put what's his name in the driver's seat. We we what? holograph we holographic <laughs> this thing into a freight train or a freight a freighter. And then we everyone, except for maybe the maybe the passengers, every the crew can <laughs> go into the stealth ship, hang out and watch. Are you suggesting that we use the gambler as bait right now? Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, if you can convince Terika. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's not a no from Ari. I think, though, out of everything said so far, I'm most interested in the ideas of either sitting and even. waiting for them to pirate somebody or uh, sending out that distress signal and seeing how they react. Um, and if they come over with true intentions to help us, awesome. Then we just let them know that what we were doing. If they come over with nefarious intentions, then um, shoot, we don't have weapons. We, re- on. we recruit them. Yes. Uh, onto we our turn side off the holographic hole. We turn on our weapons, and uh, or, or we convince them that we're so in need of help that we just they have to like board us. And by that we uh-huh. mean we'll, we'll reverse board them. 
Yeah. We could do a cry baby like from Firefly. Mm -hmm. Ooh, yeah. Something That's... to to give a I like that way better. And and yeah. see if it draws if they, you know, start frothing at I the like mouth that. and head yeah. over to take it out and then we can then we can flip Pounce. everything on and come after them. Yeah. yeah. I'm I'm we down with the cry baby. Haven and then fill them full of psychedelic drugs. <laughs> You know, if we could, if we could get control of this pirate ship with it being fully intact before we get to number one, we could park ourselves on one of those little other different moons in a remote area, strip it down to nothing, and use everything to fix the gambler yes, up. Yes, one hundred percent. Um, I'm on board with uh with stripping a ship and fixing the gambler. Also, Tarek is on board with that. If they're pirates. And Related. we get the ship intact, then oh, if we, oh, if we yeah, can put no, it down uh, to yeah, a, one sure. of the emptier worlds, park it somewhere super remote. Unrelated. Is there a piece of sci-fi media where a bunch of ships are clamped together with docking holes and making a giant space station? Okay. Mm -hmm. A flotilla? Yeah. Like I think all so. in one giant clunk? Because I feel like that would be a sweet pirate haven. <laughs> <laughs> A bunch of stolen <laughs> ships docked together to make we need this to giant our ship fucking mass would be super dope. I want to, I want to that. watch the part where like you create a pirate haven around every planet that we make our friends. I feel yeah, like yeah, yeah. Call everybody needed these coordinates and uh, and bring your magnet lock, your mag locks. At this moment, you all have yes. been trying to figure out what to do. Uh, it takes a while for some of these things to come through, uh, mm -hmm. but the welcome packet comes through. <gasps> oh. uh, it hits your it hits your comms again. Uh. The pirate doesn't know you're there. Uh, sorry, the ship yeah. that is probably not a pirate that just has its transponder on <laughs> and is lurking at the one hundred uh, at the jump line. It's cool. Mm -hmm. uh, does not know you're there yet. You have arrived. They don't know that you're there because you're very stealthy, but your welcome, your welcome packet has come through. I have created, I wanted to do this, but I never had the chance, but I did it. I was like, I'm going to do it. I've created the welcome packet for you all. Uh, if you would, <laughs> I have give you the link to your video. And I'm going to say one, two, three. And when I say uh -huh. three, I would like you to hit play. And then uh, I'm going to give this to everyone. So on, this is the welcome packet that comes through. And before you hit play, please note, this is not at all what the GDCO welcome packets look like. The GDCO welcome, GDCO welcome packets have kind of like corporate music. Yeah, and like, yeah. it's like, do, 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 do. Yes. Welcome to GDCO, that kind of a thing. So yeah. uh, on three, one, two, three. You are entering into the space of number one. This message is brought to you by Warden Ramib, Keeper of the Keys, Governor General by appointment of the Star Dragon, Grand High Choki, Administrator of the Starport, and Lord Regent of the World of Number One. Warden Ranib keeps Number One very secure, and Pirate Raiders and criminal elements should be aware that number one has exceptionally strict legal standards and a very powerful naval force to repel any and all enemies. Number one is one of the oldest surviving settlements of the Sindalian Empire. We are its heir. It is made of a number of city states all united under the leadership of Warden Ranib. Number one has no high port. For those who have streamlined spacecraft, you may approach and request docking and berthing privileges at our High Point Downport. High Point Downport, owned and controlled by Her Excellency Warden Ranib, can accommodate small craft and spacecraft only. There are no berths for capital ships. We boast high-quality, unrefined fuel for sale. For those ships that are not able to dock at our downport, we have a fuel ferrying service available for an extra fee. Visitors to High Point Downport 
should be aware of the following regulations. Visible armor and open possession of weaponry is prohibited outside of your ship. Long-bladed weapons may be carried, though they must be registered and peace-bonded. We do not tolerate illegal goods and will prosecute smuggling and black marketeering to the highest degree. Traveler Advisory The atmosphere of number one is highly toxic. High Point Downport and its small port city are built above the line of the toxic atmosphere, an unfortunate holdover from the old Sindalian War. While you may walk about High Point Downport without a vac suit, you should not leave our starport without wearing one. Indeed, Warden Ranib does not recommend any traveler leave High Point Downport at all. If, for some reason, you have business in any of the great underwater dome cities, you may take the funicular in High Point Downport to Dragon's Dome, the officially recognized capital city-state of Number One, and where Governor General Warden Ranib has her throne. However, only those travelers who have business in Dragon's Dome will be granted access. Any access to the other dome cities of Number One is only to be accessible through the Dragon's Dome subterminal. While Number One is not a planet for tourists, there is a trading post in High Point Downport, as well as a Traveler's Aid Society lounge in the North Wing. Number One is happy to inform all traders that Governor Warden Ranib has decreed that High Point Downport imposes no tariffs on those who wish to sell goods who are from off-world or from those city-states recognized as under the protection of the Warden. May we all honor the living defenders of the Star Dragon Empire of Sindal in memoriam. The Warden watches the gates and keeps number one and the reaches safe. That was amazing. We need Thank to you. leave here immediately. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right here. <laughs> let's power these people and get out. Wow. Thank you so much for that video, Trooper. Uh, we're leaving. Uh, I'm just so glad that all of my weapons are undetectable as sensors. Um, uh, you don't have any jump fuel, so you can't leave yet. Oh, yeah. That's so right. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, we have to get oh, fuel. Yeah. You do have and we have people fuel. to drop off, so... And you have yeah, people to drop answer. off and yeah, freight. fine. I'm okay with that. <laughs> uh, what was it about Dragon Dome? I was trying to write notes, some notes and that missed me. I missed that. Uh, Dragon me. Dome is the uh, officially recognized capital city of okay. uh, okay. number one. And it is underwater. And there is a funicula that will take you from the high point dra uh, downport to Dragon Dome, and according to them, uh, the only way you could get access to any of the other dome cities is through their subterminal in Dragon Dome, and also you don't get to go to Dragon Dome unless you have business. Uh, this is not for yeah. tourists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's what they say. Also, they're very dangerous, and they will destroy you in any moment. All pirates. They have they have no love for pirates. It's a good thing we're not pirates. Or just in general. It's a good thing we're not yeah. pirates, right. Yeah, we're, we're pirates. Pirates. I feel like I've said this a lot. And we might be innocent victims attacked by pirates who defended ourselves bravely and boldly and took over the pirate vessel in return. You could do that. Yeah, let's yeah, jettison attack it to our ship and do Can something. Make and, we make a pirate haven. and then we make a pirate haven. <laughs> then we'll have three ships. <laughs> I have a slight adjustment to our plan for piracy. I yeah. say mm -hmm. we refuel and we fucking leave. <laughs> I don't care about it. I, this is, I mean, this is, we are being given explicit yeah. warnings about yeah. this place. And it's not, we is are, it? We are, we are <laughs> spitting in the face of these warnings if we yeah. are anything Look, pirate related. Is it piracy if we were attacked first? 
Or is it just self defense? Oh, that's self defense. It's... But if we take their ship, that's piracy. <laughs> is it? This seems like the old <laughs> west town where the sheriff shoots both people in the gunfight, not yeah, the police. Yeah, yeah, okay. that is a very good call. Well, we could see if they're there on our way out. We'd have to come back to the jump point. Well, at the very least, it makes sense to scoop first at before least. we do anything, because then we, we have more options if shit goes sideways. Right, we do need people that need to get. We we have, yeah, our latex to man to needs the, to drop the here. Part. I think we scoop first before we do anything, because if we need to jump, we want to be able to jump. Okay, so we're going to scoop instead of just going down to refuel? We can't refuel down port, right? Oh, yeah. you, you can. They, but yeah. they have a, it's a you service can. where they charge us for it. No, if you can't dock, they, it's an extra oh, charge for them okay, to bring out. Uh, it's a shut, they have a shuttle service if you can't come down to the high point down port. But we could scoop for free. Yep. <laughs> it, could, it, it is very. Uh, it does. You, okay. So, so here's so a couple of things to note. Uh, they they have the highest quality unrefined fuel, which means you have to have a refiner on your ship, which you do, by the way. So you'll have to refine that fuel, which means you're not going to be able to just get the fuel in and then go because you have to spend like about a day or so just to refine your fuel. Uh, they don't so have refined fuel. Scoop, Scooping. Here, even if we yeah. scoop, it's on yep. fine too. Everything if you is... have to scoop, you have okay. to do the same thing. But I would also note that scooping it is... To scoop. It takes longer, it's dangerous, and your passengers will not be happy to feel that business. Because you're going into a you're going into a gas giant, uh, and it is it takes a while. It's dangerous. You are do you remember when you pirated a ship that was scooping? Because it's really hard to see if people are sneaking up on you in the middle of a gas giant. Uh, it's a vulnerable thing to do. It's a vulnerable thing to do. Uh, and other ships might have to do that at times, uh, which puts them in a vulnerable spot. But you could you have no problem going to their space station, docking, getting fueled up, and then going. That's not gonna be difficult for you at all. Because you you have a streamlined ship. Yeah. Chat, while everybody's talking about this, um, I'm going to uh, see if this is okay with Trooper. Chat, if you say that we should pirate, this will be uh, information that will go directly to Sue and therefore to Val, and Val <laughs> will argue and champion for piracy. If you say that we should just uh, go to the high point down port uh, and get the fuck out of here, that's also will go to Sue and Val. So. <laughs> I'm relying you on you to You can always direct. pirate on the way out, as 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 was mm -hmm. noted. Sounds like a that sounds like a poll to me. I'm gonna go and pull that up right now. <laughs> I see what you did there. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. I just need my. Uh, I just need it right there. Give me. You know what they're gonna do though? I don't know. Mm -hmm. like, uh, no, I don't. Care. I, don't, know. I, don't know. I, I. We, wow. we don't know. We've got so, we've got a very responsible chat tonight. Yeah, thank you, Chad. We do. Mm -hmm. I'm going to just uh, like, put this poll like, up. Go, refuel. And someone My default is always to go to the academic foxhole chat and ask, because uh, <laughs> anytime we've ever played in any of these systems, I <laughs> always incorporate the chat, because they are far more intelligent than I am. <laughs> uh, almost there. Because uh, the pirates the are out. still chilling there on the way out. We pirate the pirates on the way out. No one gets mad. I am a fan of this. Okay. Uh, especially, be, especially because it means hopefully that we get more parts. Pull is out. Okay. We're fixing oh. things. Pull is done. Spoken Pull like is a happening. True cannibal. <laughs> <laughs> Do you expect anything less at this point? Like uh, I, no. we started this whole thing with me like going, okay, I'm grabbing stuff off the ship. I'm grabbing all the stuff yeah. while everyone does everything else. Ari, I've never seen Terika happier at any point in this entire campaign than when we <laughs> stole from that initial scalping, ship. Yeah. And you were like, what? I can take shit and use it? <laughs> we need to, I, I looked, I did the math once. Uh, one night I was, I was maybe up a little too late with Trooper and I was like, how many parts do we need? And I deduced that if we like dismantled one entire, like took a week and dismantled one uh -huh. entire decent sized vessel, we could repair a, a lot of the ship. Oh. Oh, the the problem is that this ship is uh, is hundreds of years old, and none of the mm -hmm. none of the ships that you have now are really well defined. So there's a lot of inefficiency and waste, and some things are just very um, obscure. You have to get some. Just, just but there's some millions that we and can millions get. of credits. 
Yeah. Fun things. And we can sell whatever we can't use ourselves. Mm hmm. That I mean, I am 100% ready to cannibalize any other ship. That sounds Except like a bunch of privateers. I have a question that doesn't have an answer. But the, <laughs> the question is this after we saw that very welcoming video, yeah. um, is there a do you think that they will see us as being different from somebody that attacks a pirate ship? Or will they see us as somebody that's pirating a pirate ship, especially if we're breaking it down? I think that we're oh, you'd be pirating under the umbrella a pirate of criminal, ship. <laughs> yeah. right? but it's still piracy, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's a it's a. I, I think they probably have a a very broad definition of piracy, and I'm no, I'm, you can. I'm, I'm scared. Sometimes you can get away with it. And you're like, oh, we, you know, we were actually just you know protecting ourselves, and depends on how how you know. Also depends if they know, you know if they're witnesses. So the 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 on the way way out. Less witnesses, especially if we could, if their ship's ready to jump, which they probably are if they're ready to pirate, We, if we get their ship and jump out with it, who's to say there was pirates at all? Uh, I chat says like pirate on the way out. All right, chat. So are we I'm scooping or are we going down to... If are we scooping or we... The, what do you guys think? Oh, if we're yeah. going down to the high point downport, we can probably get the fuel there anyway. Yeah, um, I don't we think don't, we should whisk out wild refueling. Uh, we don't have any illegal goods on us right now, right? Well, except, except for the, for the side drugs. drugs. But the side drugs are so small, they're, I mean, it's not like a huge freight thing, you know? It's, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I will also not. note that the more money you spend in ports, the more likely they're going to like you, right? If you spend mm. money in places, that uh, helps their economy and that, impacts their feelings about Good. you. Good. Big we want to buy places. some things. Plus, yeah, we need to have, I mean, maybe uh, we can get Pirate here. Queen onto the Drynax side of the world. Let me look at the accounts. Where is uh, the total? So you would like to fly in towards number one? Yeah. Yes. That sounds nice. Uh, I'm going to ask you, you have a maneuver drive rated from 1Gs to 6Gs. Do you want to go mm -hmm. full throttle or would you like to go slowly? <laughs> full throttle, I would think. Like, I don't know. I don't see a we reason why we want to go slowly. Yeah, if we go slowly, yeah. we encourage pirates. If we go quick, they'll probably be like, oh, they're so fast. Let's get mm. easier victims. Mm. It might give them a warning that we could come after them, but I think that would also be a great reason for them to just roll over and hand us all of their stuff so <laughs> they probably just won't emerge if they see us going that fast they'll probably just stay hidden yeah if you move so you uh go full throttle it's gonna be quite some time but as you go full throttle six g's uh that is very fast that ship does not do anything i suppose they note because once you put that, that maneuver drive on, that's that's loud, right, for sensors. They're probably going to know that you exist at this point in time. Probably. Maybe, maybe not. Depends. But you're going very fast, and you do not see them move uh, at all. They sort of stay sort of hidden in their space. And as you sort of move out of range, they sort of recede into the past as you sort of make your trip towards number one. Uh, after you start moving, you, the ship sh shudders, right? It sort of moves. And once you're underway, you get the ping on your comms from Evan. Uh, so we're underway. Uh, how many hours until we get to uh, number one? Uh, 13 to 14, give or take. Oh, all right. I'll let Marcel know that he should stay. Uh, should I keep him in his quarters the whole time? Terika would look over at the Harlock, but since I assume the Harlock is taking a moment um, in their quarters, they would look where the captain's chair is. And then they would look back at the comms. <laughs> <laughs> then they'd look back at the captain's chair, and then they would look at the comms, and they would say, Considering the space, it's probably best if he doesn't leave his quarters. Pirates and mm. stuff and things. Mm. All right. And there's a pause, and then you hear bong, bong, bong. 
this is your steward for the gambler. All passengers, uh, that's you, Mr. Uh, Rambo, uh, should stay within their quarters as we traverse towards number one. It will be about uh, 13 to 14 hours, but this is a somewhat pirate-ridden space, so for your safety, you will be locked within your room, but we will be giving you food at regular <laughs> intervals. Oh my god, we have a prison! Yep. <laughs> hmm. Speaking of prisons, as you fly in <laughs> towards number one, it's, uh, I'm going to ask, because you have to, this is active flight, so uh, you can't just sort of like hang out and just let it go by itself. I mean, I suppose you could. Not really a good idea. You could have maybe. No, Terika yeah. would not do that. I'll, considering their war background. They would, though, ask for Evan to bring a bunch of caffeine to the bridge. Because they haven't had a whole lot of sleep this week. Hmm. So Evan steps out of his stay. room. Oh, um, comes back with some caffeine, but also some protein and some carbohydrates, like a nice oh, little, like, great. like, like a, oh. yeah, like a rice, a rice bowl with some, like, uh, ham and some cheese, some mm, spices mm. in there, because he's like, well, you, if you're going to be flying for 13 hours, and, like, his tail's wagging, you should eat real food, mm-hmm. and he sort of hands you a little plate of these, like, little rice balls. Oh, that's, um... That's really, these these smell amazing. Mm. Very good. <laughs> uh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> uh, mm. uh, that, that was really that was really sweet. That was that was really sweet. Thank you. Um, uh, well, you look tired. Yeah, no, it's uh, just been a long uh, week. Mm. I'm gonna go and bring food to everyone. Uh, Any sort of Ears twitch, and he sort of heads back Thank off you, toward the. Thank you, Evan. Uh, Good job. And Karina pulls out her knife, and she's like picking her, she's cleaning her fingernails. And she's like, mm-hmm. "So, are we going to attack those that pirate ship at some point? I could use a little distraction." Maybe once we get fuel? Mm. She nods. It's a good idea. If the fight doesn't go well, we can't jump out. It's no good. She smiles and she, yeah, like, sits down in the gutter spot. Clean her fingernails. Makes Quint be like, when is the last time I cleaned my nails? <laughs> and when not, like, actively piloting the ship, will pull out their knife. Uh, and very carefully... <laughs> Uh, clean, clean their nails as well. What does your knife look like? Uh, it's a little unique, uh, looking as far as knives go. Um, it's in the Soleimani handbook. Uh, it's made of stone. And it looks wicked sharp. Uh, it's got, uh, it looks like if you were to get like, it's maybe not the best for stabbing, but if you were to get sliced with it, it'd probably go straight to the bone. Um, nice. I mean, awful. I would not want to be on the receiving end of that. And there's a hook on the end. So if you did get in there and, and pulled, it would be really messy, really bad. It looks like a very vicious knife, but also very old. Like, it's not a new knife. It's been, it's been around for a while. And it's probably on a... It's got like a, like a loop through it so you can tie a string to it to wear. So it doesn't look okay. like a knife that somebody has when they're just like, oh, I'm going to go and like cut some food. Not at all. No, <laughs> not <laughs> not in the slightest. Um, it's, 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 it's actually if you if you knew if you traveled into Soleimani space uh, a lot, maybe uh, it's a very distinctive look. It's it's, it's almost like it, you can only get it on one planet in the entire galaxy. Yeah. 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 Like a pirate fillet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. 
I think we did established that Terika doesn't know a whole lot about the Soleimani system, right? Like there, yeah. there is no way that yeah. Terika would would know what this knife is. They would just be seeing it and be like, "Oh, that's a very aggressive knife." Like, <laughs> okay. That's a very good way to describe it. It is a very, <laughs> aggressive, very aggressive knife. knife. <laughs> that is the <laughs> best way to describe it. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Not, yeah. Very not aggressive. Not wrong. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 Uh. It's about, it's gonna be 14 hours. I wanna know if you have anything that you all need to do before you hit number one, uh, knowing that somebody has to be actively mm. piloting the ship the entire time. Are we still locked in our cabins? I know that we locked them only, in- Only Marcel is. Only Everybody Marcel. Can, you, all can, <laughs> you all can wander around as much as you want. It's yeah. just Marcel who's locked in his cabin because he's a passenger. I didn't want him. to bump his head. We didn't have the harlock to make decisions. And you were sitting reading things in your room. Mm -hmm. I'm doing very important things, by the way. I'm sure. uh, I think um, you may get a message that says, uh, uh, hold on. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah, no, I, I watched it. Yes, I, I definitely watched it. Yes, I, um, uh, don't want to risk too much. I have a lot of ideas that involve a lot of different things, but I don't know if it's safe for us to risk it. The, what are you, are you, uh, well, I, okay, so, um, first off, there was a ship that looked like it might have been a pirate ship on our way in. Um, I'm thinking it might be worthwhile to handle that for the planet and also get some things for ourselves on our way out. Are you saying you don't want to do that? Yeah, certainly seems to have some control issues. Yes. Right. Uh, well, um, is my door open? Uh, I... Why would I know that? Right, we, we, locked, we locked it all down, right? Didn't someone... Oh, it's open, it's open. Well, the, 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 Thank you. Oh, my God. Insufferable man! <laughs> he does seem a little slow on the uptake at times. At times, I, I swear, he does these things just to drive me crazy. That like, is also, he, it could be, you know, weaponized incompetence is a thing, they say. You know, I, I've heard about this. I hear that it's yeah. actually fairly common, this weaponized incompetence. More common than I would like, yes. Yeah, you can say that again. Terrica. Especially in certain cultures. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Terika, do you know what is kind of weird? Mm. Over the last couple of days, everything has been so clear and crisp. Yeah, like you could is. just see more things. And yeah. it's a little bit less like that now, uh, but also, you have always been so close with Val. And yeah. in the last week or so, you felt so connected to Val, to Quint, to actually everyone on the crew, um, except for Harlock, not as much, a little bit, but not as much. You just mm -hmm. felt very close to them, like in a very kind of deep way. And now it just feels like they're very far away. It feels like you... <sighs> are not able to see as well as you used to be able to see. Sense, that's a better word, not see sense. You couldn't, like your senses, you're always so sharp and it just feels, you feel a little dull and you feel a little hollow, a little less connected. Um, as we're just sort of piloting along, at one point, Terika will like, reach their hand over to hold Quinn's hand. It'll just be that sort of like 
sort of, you know, like the brush of the back of the hand of like, oh, is mm-hmm. this okay? Sort of moment yeah. that they're. Quint's fine with it. And then they'll just hold on to Quint's hand while piloting with their other uh, yeah. hand. Quint um, thought about getting her arm checked out by Val, but this definitely notices how tired Terika is. <laughs> And is like, maybe I shouldn't leave them alone to pilot. Also, Quint has definitely noticed that while Quint and Tarek have been spending, you know, a good bit of time together the past week, Tarek has also been spending the night in Val's room every night. And so maybe that is part of the exhaustion. Maybe Tarek should just take it easy physically a little bit. You know, not that Quint knows what's going on. Uh, but Quint can make assumptions um, based on uh, how tired someone seems. And where they're spending their time. That's all. That's all I'm going to say. Just... Mm-hmm. I think that's, yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't know if Terika recognizes that in their state <laughs> at all. Yeah. They that's don't. Fine. They're just like, they're just like, oh man, I just, I need to, I need some kind of, I just need to, I need to, I need connection. Um, I can that's tell. where they're at. Yeah. And I will ask you one more question. You have a stealth ship strapped to the bottom of your ship, clamped. Uh, Do you wish to drop that off on one of the other planets before you get to number one? Oh, because once we connect, even though we have the holographic hull, but we have the holographic hull that covers the look. It does, which is only visual, that is true. So you could keep it on there and just hope they don't inspect your ship physically? No. Actually, they don't. We would. So they might but think we're you pirates. Absolutely can do. <laughs> but you absolutely can. It's up to you. If you keep the, if you keep the, uh, if you keep your holographic hull up the entire time, and they don't actually do like a physical check, uh, you should be fine. Um, I don't know that Terika would want to risk it with the with the. They they really like this little ship. They wouldn't want to risk it. Is there like a moon or an asteroid that we could tuck behind? And yeah, absolutely. Like this what is like a that? pretty. This is. A... I was being. I was being one of the inspectors. All right, sir. Oh. Go do the physical inspection and touch every inch of the ship. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're we'll very under ship. Oh. We did see that their uh, welcome packet. I would not be surprised if part of their inspection in a place right, with a bunch of pirates. You gotta make sure you're not having any very... pirate cargo uh, secret holes out here. <laughs> yep. that... I'm just gonna run my hands underneath here where there doesn't appear to be anything. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna exactly. run my hands there anyway just to make sure it's invisible. Wait, I found <laughs> something. No, sure. it's not. I think it finally worked. <laughs> I thought it just looked like an ex- an extension of our belly. Do we have it being invisible, or is it an extension of no, the belly? No, it's an extension because we can't. Yeah, it's an extension of the belly. Okay. Because hey, if it was invisible, yeah. it's a whole other thing. <laughs> it's up to you. Sir, like, you know, it's your choice. It's your choice. Because there, you could drop it off, and like, there's a there's another world that's circling the that same gas giant. You could just drop it off there and make sure you have like a. A set, like a little well, beacon, nothing, so you know where to find it. Nothing bad's going to happen there, of course. Transparently, my only concern is that this is a pirate area. Somebody yeah, is watching us fly in, the GM. and we drop <laughs> our little sweet ship somewhere. Mm-hmm. We have to. Wait, I feel like the only way we drop it is if someone was there to move it in case of a take care of it. A signal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Babysit it. But I don't. I, I, I will point. not have Wesley pirate piloting. I <laughs> wouldn't. <So long. laughs> <laughs> Uh, now, uh, you do have your holographic hull up, which does make it look like an extension of the ship itself, so you could just, you know, go in and risk it. We could leave it with the Harlock. Meta-wise? Oh, we could have yes. the Harlock somewhere. Harlock. Yes. Yes. You could have the Harlock pilot it to one of those other spaces and, and yeah. give it a, a wait. Mm-hmm. Keep, keep with Incom's oh. contact with it. Yeah. Yep. Let us have that. The Harlock will take the stealth ship and move it to one of the other planets, like one of the, one of the moons, so that she's not that far away. Mm-hmm. And it's a great idea. Tripper this... would never do anything to a character whose player's not here. That's it's never happened. Yeah, it's never happened. I feel like I, I feel like I'm rocking it. I feel like there's no good answer here. I feel like every answer is a trap. Like... Yeah, it always... <laughs> Which 
flavor trap do we yeah, want exactly. is the question. Troopers plan for everything. We just select something and move on. We're just like, which so test do we want today? Let's have that. That's perfect. So the Harlock is going to take this ship and head off to a moon. Planned. All right. And yeah, as you come closer to number ship, one, so we can turn itself invisible. So yes. Well, which it doesn't turn itself invisible. Yeah. It's just it's really hard to. It has like a lot of like sensor to t sensor reflecting paint on it, so it's hard to notice. Okay. Turn the headlights it's, off. Park it under yeah, the turn the headlights off. Turn the headlights Only off. fly in the dark. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, so, the land on the dark side of the moon. That's yeah. You approach the planet number one because we have to go to break soon, but I want you here at this planet first. Oh and as you arrive, you can see this planet blue. Uh, and there is like a, you don't, you can't really see the, um, what's on the planet very well, because all you see is like a kind of a sickly green yellow atmosphere that surrounds this planet. It's, thick, it roils, it's, hard, it's dense, it's hard to see anything in it. But as you're approaching, the, it's not that far out, actually. Uh, you, don't, it's, you don't get this ping super, super far out. You have to get a little bit closer to the planet that you might imagine. Um, somebody can make a education sensors roll, if they would like, uh, mm -hmm. about this. As you come in close, all of a sudden you start getting the ping you start sort of sensing the ping of the uh, high point downport, which is in the planet's atmosphere itself. So you have to sort of uh, dive down into the system in order to. Oh, hey, all right, okay. Um, hey, good news. Our Terica, holographic hole it doesn't need to be used anymore, so we now can do other things. That is true. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, that is true. Actually, that's true. Uh, so. You have you have some good education, uh, Terika. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When you start getting the you start you notice when the sensor pings happen. Like you notice about how far out you are before you start getting the sensor pings because this space station, this uh, starport spaceport, has of course sensors because that's how you know when there are pirates around and when you need to start attacking people. And as the as you start getting the pings back, sort of hitting your transponders, transponders, because you hit it that moment their transponder starts sending off uh, its signal. And when it does, you do a little bit of math in your head. You know, it doesn't take you too long. Um, this... Spaceport, judging by the distance of when your transponders pinged and responded, has, at your guess, civilian grade sensors on it. As opposed to the military grade sensors that you have on your ship, the Gambler. Or advanced grade sensors like some of the GD Co. Uh, spaceports had. Because they can see much farther and you get pinged much earlier, right? Like further out when your transponder pings. Uh, but you get closer than you would have expected. Uh, if you were, I don't know what you were expecting, really. But like they've got about like maybe civilian grade uh, sensors on their spaceport. But you see this summit, this mountain peak that is rising above the sort of like gross green, yellow, that kind of mustardy, a mustardy green sort of atmosphere. This mountain puck top sort of like reaches above this sort of cloud cover. And on the top of this mountain top, you can see the, the downport, right? It's got, uh, and as you get closer and closer, you're going to be getting a ping on the radio at any moment, but I want to tell you at least what you see. It is, um, there is like a, a base with enclosed landing pads, but 
most of the pads are actually just open. They're open to the atmosphere. They're not closed. Uh, so there are a number of landing pads. There are only two that are very big. Most of them seem to only sort of have pads for smaller sized ships, of which you would count as one. Um, and there are, at this point, two ships that are on the sort of the outer pads uh, just landed. So it looks like if you land on these outer pads, you're going to land and then walk into the station itself. The station is pretty large, is what I would say. It's like actually a pretty large station, but most of it is uh, all taken up with these sort of uh, external pads. You can tell that there seems to be something that looks to you like a a shipyard, so they are sort of building ships, but it's a very small shipyard, so they're not building anything, they're not going to build anything that is... They're building things that seem to be about the size of your little stealth ship, like the little shuttles. They're sort of building little shuttles, that kind of a thing, nothing nothing as big as what you have. Um, you also can see that there are, is like a, a village, like there's like a, they're like, it's like a city, right? There's like a city that's built up around this uh, downport with houses, and uh, you can see cars sort of going back and forth. So it seems like a, a city itself is on like one side of this part. And there's like a space that's like a maybe like 10% of this place seems to be like a, a spaceport that is enclosed and the rest is all sort of open to the elements. And as you're sort of noting this, you do note um, weaponry, sort of defense systems are there. Uh, quite a few defense systems. Uh, if anybody has tactics. What kind of tactics? I have naval tactics. Sounds familiar to me. That would be good. Does anyone else have tactics? I'll roll it if not. I have education. No, I have military. Sorry. Military tactics. Uh, you can both give them to me, but yours, the military will be more, we'll actually wait for the military. That will be more relevant when you actually get into these, uh, into this, this space station. Give me naval. Oh, Ooh, very nice. Yeah, military um, is for like boarding, right? Ground stuff. And also like ground, ground combat. Yeah. Like if you're yeah, yeah. on the ground and people are trying to attack your village. Yeah, um, yeah. They have got um, missile launchers. They've got missile turrets, and missiles are quite dangerous, of course. Um, they don't have... These missiles are not going to hit the jump line. Uh, that's not what... Now, of course, GDCO wasn't really attacking anybody out in the jump line either. They were attacking people who tried to attack their station. Uh, but this place, it looks like it's got a, a bunch of missile turrets which are not the highest level technology. Uh, if they are, if they got very good gunners, that might make your life kind of sad, but um, they probably could not take down capital ships if capital ships wanted to attack this planet. Um, these are the kinds of weapons you would have on uh, smaller sized ships. It looks like they've taken kind of like ship level defenses and have used that to defend this downport. So it is not, I mean, I wouldn't want to attack them with one ship, but could probably outrun their defenses, uh, depending on how fast you were. Um, now, they might have, it would make sense that a place like this might have some ships, some like Corsairs or sort of defense ships. Um, there's some indications of like one or two, but they don't seem to have like a huge number of defensive ships either, at least not out on pads. They might be in the covered spaces. But what I would say to you is from naval tactics, this is not a naval base. You do not see a naval base. Um, they do not have military grade defenses. They have high level civilian grade defenses would be the best way to put it. Um, they are not going to be, yeah, I, <clears throat> let's hope pirates don't attack them because any kind of large pirate fleet or naval fleet that I don't know how great they would be at defending against those attacks is what I would say. 
Does it look like there have been atta attacks uh, on the place? Like, are there scars on the platform or anything like that? There are a couple, um, but they don't look new. They don't look fresh. But it looks like there have been some, like, some blasts, but not many and not recent. Um, yeah. But it doesn't look like they've been devastated or anything like that. Um, it looks like they're so out of the way that people are probably not going to attack them that often, to be honest. Right? Mm -hmm. Like, this is like a long, long journey to get here. And this place does not look to you like the flash and excitement of a GD Coast station. It looks... Actually, I mean, even Drynax. Like, these. this is a... Uh, it's, it's a good station. Like, it's a... Huh. modern for us in our planet and Earth now. It's sort of, it would be more advanced than what we would have, but it's nowhere near as advanced as something like Drynax uh, or the kind of technology that GDCO has. Um, but I would say that it's also bigger than it probably needs to be. Like this, like there are two ships on these landing pads and there are over a hundred landing pads. Like there are oh, okay. so many landing pads on this on this uh, downport. Like, there are hundreds. Like, there are only a couple for really big ships, but there are, like, hundreds of little landing pads for little small little shuttles and a couple dozen for, like, sort of larger ships uh, and and clearly more on the inside, but um, there are not really any ships here. There are, like, two. Um, and you can also see the large, large, like, there's a, like, tower with, like, these, like, gondolas that will like, shoot down and down below the atmosphere itself and yes and as you arrive you get the call uh, from the tower uh, and it says simply the gambler you have arrived at number one high point down we must ask you first and foremost, do you need an internal bay or an external bay? Internal bays are reserved, are given priority to those ships who need annual maintenance or other repairs. If you do not need annual maintenance or other repairs, then we will give you an external landing pad slot. Captain Harlock, do you need an internal bay or an external bay? Terika and Dark like... on the other ship. <laughs> worry, I'm a spy. <laughs> I'll <laughs> Harlock if we need to. Well, please go ahead. <laughs> uh. uh... Uh, Terika like looks around the bridge again for what? literally we said anybody on the other ship. Um, do you want to be Harlock or should I be Harlock? Uh, uh, yeah, you. How about you be you be Harlock? You can be. Yeah, yeah. All right. <clears throat> yes, this is the Harlock speaking. I believe an external bay would suit us just fine. Thank you. Wow, you are really good at that. It's amazing. You may take landing pad number 57 in the name of the Governor Ranib. You are welcome to number one. Thank you, 57. Do acknowledged. Do Thank you need you. fuel? Yes, we will need fuel. Hmm. Fair. Please make your way to landing pad number 57. We will have to check your papers, of course, as I'm sure you of course. are expecting. Yes, expect nothing less from not the high point down port. Oh, balls. Hmm. Good. We will need to check uh, in person. We will need to see your papers on a pad, a data pad. 
as this is happening, Tara make Terika like presses whatever button is necessary to make Severance. sure that Severance can like listen to this conversation. Yes. Yeah. Like, like, Deke, okay, here you go. You are welcome to number one at the name and in the name of Warden Ranib, Keeper of the Keys, Governor General by appointment of the Star Dragon, Grand High Choki, Administrator of the Starport, and Lord Regent of the World Number One. All hail the Star Dragon Empire. Out. Oh, God. All right. I thought about uh, having a long may she reign, but I, I wasn't sure if that would be culturally appropriate. But uh... Uh, for for the record, use. all of you know this: the Star Dragon Empire is the Sindalian Empire, which has not existed mm -hmm. in a very long time. Yeah, very, I'd be open to uh, very long time some diplomatic negotiations and i speak old Zindali. i wonder if they mm -hmm. do too probably it's a good question mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if they don't you're gonna make yeah. them look real bad <laughs> <laughs> so how are you guys doing oh you don't understand uh, this oh, okay oh sorry i thought you were mm -hmm. part of the empire oh mm -hmm. my bad <laughs> and uh as your ship I'm going to need a roll. I need a piloting roll from you, if you don't mind. Uh, yes. Uh, do I so whoever's going to be piloting? Assist? You may assist. Please, Please roll do your assist. assist me. Uh, it's just dex pilot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool. I haven't rolled anything in a hot minute. Let's hope it's not the worst. <laughs> ba -ba 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 -ba. 11. I help Yay. real good. Excellent. Could you please, if you don't mind, roll... Terica, uh, your dex, uh, your piloting spacecraft, you're going to get a plus eight. I get plus eight to this? Yes. Holy yes, cannoli. You do. This number is going to yes. be insane. Oh my gosh. We, we look amazing. <laughs> it's a crit. That's double sixes. Wow. Yeah. Holy cow. Oh Please my, go. double sixes on something. top of all of that. Yeah. yeah. Um, you I'm going to note for the record. Coming in. What the hell? You have a plus three that you can use when you are. Uh, anybody in this crew has a plus three that they can use when they want to uh, do some kind of social thing with anybody who's a pilot who noticed that. Like anybody who noticed the excellence of that landing. Which. Yeah. Uh, but as I feel you like land, it was like. I feel like it was one of those, you know, when you're like driving a car and you brake so smoothly yeah. that you don't even like recognize that you've come to a stop. Uh -huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like that's what this land was, was like. Yeah, we don't, we didn't do -do -do -do. feel the landing gear go down. We're just like, we're here. Yeah. Yeah. We've been yeah. Here for a couple minutes. Yeah. We're like, what? <laughs> Derek is like, wow, caffeine work. <laughs> <laughs> Before we go to break, I wish I want you all to know this. As you land on this external landing pad, and there's like wind, a little bit of light rain, the internal part of the starport itself is before you. These two other ships are far away. I need you to know that the starport looks like a prison. And you Charming. see a number of Guards, starport guards, patrolling around the area. And they are armed. But more importantly, what I would say is their uniforms don't look like military uniforms. They look like prison guard uniforms. They look uh, as if they are very fancy prison guards, but uh, with a little bit of extra, like prison guards in like a dress uniform. Uh, very sort of slightly ornate but they very much look like prison guards. And the building itself looks like a prison uh, with sort of like search, search uh, spotlights. Uh, um, on the wall. And, <laughs> mm -hmm, yes. Uh, and there is like a, like there is like a town here, but the town is sort of on the other side of where you're landed. Um, and it's a little empty. And you can see these prison guards approaching your ship. 
they're not too far away. They knew where you were landing and they were making sure to come to greet you. And everything's a little bit gray. Um, the uniforms are sort of gray, but they have got these sort of like police badges on. Uh, and in this sort of moment, you get the pings on your sensors at the atmosphere that is right below this, this, uh, the summit is exceedingly corrosive and toxic. Uh, and might, it would kill you if you were not in a vac suit. And you also do not want to be in a vac suit. You probably wouldn't want anything that is, um, anything to be in that atmosphere for very long. Like you could be there in your vac suit for a while, but it would probably start corroding the seals after a few hours, right? So it's one of those things like you can be there briefly, but you probably don't want to be there certainly not longer than 12 hours. So there's probably like you wouldn't want to fly your ship in there and just sit there for 12 hours. Yeah. As these prison guards come to, uh, I'm sorry, uh, starport guards come to approach your ship. Mm -hmm. That's where we're going to take our break. Oh my goodness. Everyone. I love this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We'll be in break, everybody. Take 10, stretch your legs, get some water. I've got some... Oh, I didn't drink my Dr. Pepper. No, my Dr. Pepper. Uh, and when we get back, they're going to meet all the friendly denizens of uh, uh -huh. the High Point Yay. Downport. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, if you want, you can spend your channel points to make an asset. Somebody, if they decide to go looking for assets to for connections, that they might be able to meet there. And that's uh, with your channel points. And we will or see you in 10 minutes, everyone. Pepper. Yes. Hello, everyone. Hello, hello. We are back. Our crew has arrived on uh, a what was once a prison planet uh, for the Sindalian Empire, because the Sindalian Empire liked to have an entire planet full of prison. Um, who doesn't like that? But that was hundreds and that was centuries ago. Uh, but they have just arrived on this planet. Um, they have in their hold some people who are in low berth. They have some freight to deliver. They're here to go and get their things they need to go. Uh, usually people spend about a week in a port and then head on out. And my understanding is that we're probably gonna just, you know, just wrap it up and then just go uh, just head out. I'm sure there'll be nothing to distract anyone in any way. Um, but in this moment, there never, uh, is. There never is. Uh, you have your ping at the door. of your ship. I am at the uh, door. Mm-hmm. I need to stop eating grapes for this, because I'm the fit captain. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think Quint would have dashed to their room real quick to um put on a shirt that's not quite just athleisure wear to look a little bit more captainly, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, Don't have mm -hmm, a lot of those, mm -hmm. but probably has like a nice I'll a shirt or coat or something. Jacket. Just whoo. And then, um, well, on comms, while probably getting changed, be like, uh, Terika, you should probably let the others know that I am faking the Harlock Ness for the time being oh. because we don't have our captain. Uh, yes. No, uh, good, good idea. I, I will. Um, and then Terika gets on to the comm <laughs> with. Um, I not Marso, I but I imagine door. we can just like handle that without him yeah. necessarily knowing, but with everyone else on the crew. So, anyone who wasn't on the bridge, which I think was Wesley Severance, um, I'm trying to call him Kevin, and that's not his name, and Kevin Val, Val and Evan, but Evan, there we go, yeah. Uh, and they and they basically just say, uh, so, uh, with the Harlock 
taking care of um, personal business. The best. Uh, I forget what the name of the ship was. Our our tiny little ship. Did we name it? The Camlin Viper um, is what was okay. named originally. Camlin you can always Viper. change it name. Okay. Oh, the Viper. They would just now. call it the Viper. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. I would say. Uh, they would just say uh, because uh, the Harlock is on the Viper um, handling their her things. Um, Quint is uh, impersonating the Harlock, so um, just be prepared. She, they have uh, said that they are the Harlock and uh, the captain of the ship. Yes. <laughs> Click. <laughs> Someone needed we, to do it. Back on. You can be like, oh, yes, hello, excuse me, prison town. Yes, we don't have our captain with us right now. That would be way more sus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wait, did Severance just say what to that? Because Jericho would have. Okay, then Jericho would turn it back on and they would say, what do you mean, what? It's very straightforward. The Harlock is the captain. The Harlock isn't here. Quint is the Harlock. Yeah, yeah, I'll okay. be going towards the door. You're okay with this? <laughs> as long as he gets to be the admiral, I don't think he cares. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but also, he is the one who is the best at administration, which is often what you need right about now. Yep. Mm -hmm. I will meet uh, the Baron by the door. <laughs> I hope this goes well. Uh, Hello. I think I think the hair has been pulled up into like a neat bun to make it look like a little more a little more captainly, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, good! Just... I was going for a half up, half down kind of look. <laughs> I didn't want to have us both do the same. Would have been thing. terrible if we could match. Yes. Um... Yeah, when you, I assume you open the doors for them. Oh yes, yes, yes. Of course. I wait for course. I wait for Quint to do it. Yeah, Quint will Quint will open the door. Sweet. Quint knows how to do uh, that much at least. When you open the door, there are two people in sort of prison guard uniforms, uh, and they step up the ramp into the ship, looking around, and one takes the lead, and the one, this this is a sort of like a... Can a, I help you? A woman who's very burly, and they've got these, like, helmets on that, like, have, like, a... One of those helmets kind of looks a little bit like a... a they kind of dip over low over the eyes, uh, sort of ceremonial mm, helmets, mm -hmm. like not like space helmets, right? And they've got like a, a a bill that kind of like dips down, kind of like the, uh, like, you know, beef eaters, but they don't have the big beef eater. Like, you know how they're kind of like, kind of low, yeah. right? Yeah. Sort of covering up the eyes just a little bit. Uh, and she steps on I imagine the Queen Latifah from Chicago. Yes. Okay, perfect. And she goes... I need your papers. And she holds out like a like a, a reader, like for uh like for your a data pad reader for she's right. waiting for you to beam over your information. Yeah, and I'll just you know, like like gesture for uh, the Baron to present the right, and I go gonna... ahead and I swipe upward, but this is bullet time. <laughs> As I do it, is there any rolls I have to make for this? Yes. Um, I need you you have a choice. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It depends on what you're doing, either right. administration or streetwise, right. but they imply different things about the papers you're giving them. Administration would be the truth. Streetwise would, that would be, be the correct. the truth. Less right. the truth. That is correct. Less the truth. That is correct. Well, um, what do we need to hide from these people? The drugs, which isn't on our manifest at all. That is correct. Um... We have people, which is legal. We have a hole. We have a hole in our um, transponder thing that they're going to see, aren't they? It's true. A gap. Yeah. Uh, but we had, you had gap, an excuse that a... to that pirates, right? Mm -hmm. yes. That was the excuse. Oh, damage, yeah, that right? was ages ago. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was quite a yeah. while ago. So. But damage isn't going to make them go, mm, you, you've been damaged. Um, are they? I don't think so. Um, I don't think so. I don't think there's anything that we need noted, to... But right. I don't think there's anything they, we need to... It was to... noted at the last point, too, wasn't it? Hide yeah, anything? Yeah. It's always noted. Yeah. So, yeah. They always just note this, the 
part 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 of that is insurance because they don't want you to say like, oh, we were fine before we left, and now we're damaged. Mm -hmm. You know. Right. Is this uh, everyone? We're good for. This is gonna I'm be an for... admin roll. This is yeah, a good, I'm good for, for admin. Roll. We don't need to. We don't need to do anything wacky or weird here. Okay, good. No, not unless uh, you want so. to. Every... Mm, I, well, uh. Me? Yes. Um, but I, I won't. Uh, okay. I don't think we need to. I don't think we need to yet. Um, but I will uh, admin. Um, am I? I'm on the wrong sheet. Cool. I love that. I love it when I do that. All right. This the only thing is, is we don't have a number of people that match our manifest, but that's if they check every single person who's on the crew. That is correct. Right. That is correct. Right, right, right. Which they will probably do if you're uh depending on how i roll if you roll really badly <laughs> okay perfect uh what is my uh skill well it's a real shady character wow social, right yeah admin social <laughs> uh, yeah mm -hmm. okay any modifiers at all probably not nope i i was in on the ship when terica landed and I didn't feel a so. Thing. If you like need it, you can take that. Okay, I'm not okay. if you need it. Uh, I don't think I need it right now. Um, and okay, I'm just gonna say it. Let's see. Add that three. Which I need an eight. I'm gonna use you my do. luck. You do. Smooth. Oh, you can use your luck. Okay. I have, I have only what three okay. luck or one luck? I think I only have three. Let me double check. Three, I believe. Hmm? I do have three. I'm gonna use some luck. You need to spin um, that too. Yes. I am going to spend two of my luck. Okay. That will bring you up to the eight. So they, uh, they look at your paperwork, digital paperwork. Mm -hmm. uh, and the front is like data work. looking at it, data work, but then like keeps glancing at the ship. Right as she's inside the hold, and she's sort of looking at it, and she's looking at the sort of the internal damage, and oh, how if you don't of... mind that I have a sword up on my waist here. We haven't left oh, the ship yet, so she's... technically. Oh, I know. I'm just trying to distract her from. Looking Do you me. plan on taking this sword with you off your mm -hmm. ship? I wasn't planning on it. Do you recommend I should? No. I don't. You won't be staying longer than the one week, I assume. We should be even staying as for the week. Well, usually birthing fees are per week, so you have the entire week to stay. Right, and that's, that's if okay. we would want to. So far, uh, looking at uh, what I've seen, it doesn't look like we would want to. Especially if there's no tourism. We're just here for no, business. there is no tourism. You're here mm. for business. Yes. I see. I see from your paperwork you have freight to deliver. I assume that means you're doing trade. We are very friendly for traders. We love trading. We encourage. Yes, we encourage trade. Any sort of traders who want to come here and make money and spend money, we find that excellent. Oh, I do like making and spending money as well. We have a very oh. rigorous and active trading center here. Oh. That's good I to have know. been told by First the time. by the warden that I should encourage all ships to tell their friends that we are friendly and good for trade. <laughs> I'll make really a note of that. It. Well, whatever people want to trade, we are we are a premier mining planet now, so we have a great deal of ore and other minerals. People who need that sort of a thing. We are an excellent space. We have a great number of minerals. And we are happy to trade them. Expensive and valuable minerals. And we are perhaps, uh, we have a very fine accommodations here in High Point Downport. And Nothing everyone here. is welcome to spend their time in our, we have a hotel. It's quite huh? fancy. Comfortable. A question for you. Uh, you said minerals. Yes. Um, does that include just rough ore? Or the, uh, it does, number one, have a gemstone trade as well? 
Yes, uh, we have a great number of gemstones and ores, gold, silver, uranium, platinum, uh, other Wonderful. things. Wonderful. Love but to hear it. you don't have any business in the domes, do you? I don't uh, believe we do. No, we don't. Perhaps. Good. Maybe some trade, reputable jeweler, perhaps. Hmm. You need a more complicated jeweler than one you might find up here? Well, perhaps. <sighs> if I cannot find one here, then, uh, well. And you can tell there's a discomfort there. Like, a, like well, well, if I can't find one up here where it's, you know, welcome, I guess I'll just have to take my business elsewhere kind of implication there, yeah. No, the implication, she was like, oh, you might need to go down down to the lower dome. Mm -hmm. Just, well... Yeah, but I want them to reach you, that implication and welcome me in. <laughs> if you need to meet one of our expert jewelers down in Dragon's Dome, that can be arranged. We can give you a pass. But please be aware that we will be checking passes when leaving Dragon's Dome very vigorously. Everyone who oh, leaves we'll Dragon's right, Dome must have a pass. No, thank you for the you information. Not, you are not allowed to bring anyone with you when you leave Dragon's Dome. I hope you are aware. You're, you're wasting your breath. We won't be going to Dragon's Dome, thank you. We have no business there. All right. If you do, you can get a pass. It is possible if you have legitimate business, seeing a jeweler or one of the archives is legitimate, but you must get stamped and noted. Your name will be written down that you are going down <laughs> below. And we'll be checking to make sure when you come up that you are the same person coming up that is going down. Yes, let me make a counterfeit amulet that Wesley gave me <laughs> under the Harlock's name. <laughs> I'm sorry. <clears throat> yes, carry on. <clears throat> we are very welcoming to strangers and off wilders. I can tell. So you have to have no need of fear. We are very welcoming. But uh, do you mind if we speak about non-business for the moment? Uh, unless you have... Oh, certainly. Yes, I will, by we the way... friendly traders uh, as well. Good. I will get, I will get the, uh, machines to come to take your freight off. I see that you have some for this port. That will be taken care Thank of. Thank you. You have we'll get in position the for them. walk. Good. You have the walk of the whole high point down port. Uh, but this is, a a Harrier class, is it not? Yes, isn't she a beautiful uh, ship? And, uh, you know, under a bit of renovation, we got to, uh, you know, spruce it up a little bit, but uh, lots of potential. We have not seen anything like this in centuries. These are very rare. <laughs> yes, we take great pride in her. This is uh, a Drynaxian model sort of copied off of Sindal, isn't it? It is, yeah. Wow, you really know your ships. <laughs> no, we know Sindal, the great Star Dragon Empire. Indeed. Drynax, they were the pretenders to the throne <laughs> of, Dry of Sindal, if I remember correctly. Uh, they claimed that they were somehow the followers of Sindal when clearly... It is us here who are the only ones who hold the light of the Star Dragon Empire. Although, uh, Drynax doesn't really exist anymore. Shame. What they tell one me. would argue that the Dragon Empire also is. Uh, <laughs> Look at the well. Baron. <laughs> like, let's not antagonize the prison planet. <laughs> The Star Dragon Empire lives because our excellency, the Warden, lives. She has give, was given her authority by the Star Dragon Empire, and we did not perish. And so, therefore, she is the ranking noble 
of the great star dragon Sindalian Empire. <laughs> what an illustrious heritage. Hmm. Yes. Oh, my mistake. If you don't... <laughs> Good. If you do not mind, I have to report in that there is a ship of interest. We may have scholars who might wish to look at this ship, if that is all right with you. To look at the ship? For what? It's not for sale. Yes. Thank you, though. No, but to study it. Well, we are on a bit of a tight schedule, but um, I'll talk it over with our pilot and some of the other passengers and crew. I'm sure studying it will take weeks, months. Uh, That won't be necessary. It's not for sale. And uh, if there is someone who wishes to study or research uh, the ship, then we will expect a full compensation of our time and or funds. We can discuss compensation. It's just that uh, there may be bits of knowledge on this ship that might be useful for Her Excellency, technologically speaking. Very kind. Oh. Well, uh, if that's the case, then I'd like to take a look at your defenses as well and maybe study those, please. Uh, you do not need to look at our defenses. Our defenses, if you may not... And you do not need to look at our ship. Thank you very much. We're here for business, You're... and that is in business strictly. Thank you. This is a business proposition. Yes, but not one that this... I want. We'll consider it. Think it over. Yeah. Yes, well, you are welcome. Uh, please note... The entrance to the starport is that door there. Go through that door, not any other door. There is a line painted on the landing pads. Mm. You can see Mm -hmm. it in dark gray. Follow that line. Do not stray from the line unless you have business or reason to do so. Once you enter into the internal section of our downport, you will see arrayed before you all of the welcoming gifts, hotels, and entertainment you can imagine. There's not much entertainment, but there are hotels what? and they're welcoming. Thank you for your warm welcome. I'm sure we'll yes. love our visit here. Please note, we are going to make sure that when you leave, any passengers you take on are authorized to leave the planet. Certainly. It might be better for you not to pick up passengers at all, unless they are off world. I don't think we were planning to. Mm, all right. Off worlders you can take. And those Noted. from here who have special permission from Her Excellency. Still a prison planet. But <clears throat> welcome to number one. The jewel of the Star Dragon Empire. Feel free to wander as you wish. I will contact our scholars about your ship. They may get in touch with you, Captain, and Purser. And they sort of just look at your cargo. It doesn't seem very exciting to them. They kind of note all these sort of the boxes, the freight that are going to be sort of mm-hmm. moved. And they yeah. leave. Uh, they leave. Terco, we have a problem. Uh, as soon as the doors close, I sort of... I mm-hmm. Yeah, that's as soon as the door closes, that's the... <laughs> I turn to Quint and I go, you may be uh, impersonating the captain, but you are not acting captain. You know that, right? Yeah, yes, I most definitely do know that, but I also don't want us to get the boots to leave, the, have to be forced to leave the planet before we can even refuel. Which is what you get if you're being... Ple- you can always say, oh, we consider it, and then leave. Right. Say, oh, the timetable's run out. Considering is basically a fancy way of saying, uh, maybe later. Oh, I know. Probably no. Oh, I know. But I'm telling you that you may be impersonating the captain. I don't want to. Or not acting, captain. Captain. Good. Then I'll take it over from here. You're dismissed. I just wait. Val. So, anyways, Terika. (laughs) The comm was definitely open for all of that. Val, I need you to make two rolls for me to bring your passengers out of low birth without killing them. Oh, good. If no you kill them, you know, that's a bit of a problem. Uh, but... Yeah, not really. Yeah, you <laughs> know. I mean, maybe, you, for know, them. you don't worry so much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, for them. Uh, you have two passengers. 
who need to disembark here, uh, Clay Humphrey and Calix. I need you to make a medic check, int-based. Do I get you get a plus one for the ship, by the way. Right. Plus one for the ship. Oop, not a plus 10. Not a plus 10. <laughs> do it, do it, chaos. One more, 12. if you please. 12, is that what that says? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Roll 20 really wants to give me that 10. Another 12. Oh. You uh, do not need really good. to. I know. Yes, you do. You you have you only have to roll a six. It's not actually very difficult to get people out of uh, low birth unless they're sick or sickly or weak, in which case then the dangers are a little bit more. But it does take you. It takes a while to. It takes a while to sort of decompress them and move them through the process of getting out of low birth. Uh, so it'll take you about. You're gonna be spending while you're here. You'll be spending about an hour and a half getting these people out and sort of woken up right and And which is also when a whole freight's gonna come uh, val has a whole thing that he does like he sits there he he has music that he's playing during the whole thing Mm. um you know he has oxygen ready for them to kind of wake up he has adrenaline if somebody really needs to kind of not necessarily adrenaline but you know like a caffeine pill to kind of get going and the whole time he's kind of talking to him and talking you should be experiencing this you should be experiencing that yeah um, this is all perfectly fine. Your vitals are fine. If you feel numbness, it's perfectly normal, blah, blah, blah. Getting them all ready. And Sue is there uh, helping, like just like monitoring. And like you can see like Sue interfacing digitally with uh, the sensors, right? On these low births. Uh, and it, as you are, as like the music is playing and you've got everything set up and I imagine the lighting is actually not so harsh. Um, the kind of mood that you are exuding is exactly the mood that Sue exudes. Like, Sue in many ways mirrors you. Um, your moods, your feelings, your your vibe, and that kind of warm, great bedside manner that you have, Sue also has it, and Sue is uh, just, like, there as a support to make you feel supported and stable and and you know it's just like a it's you've had sue for a long time sue is very um dependable and reliable um now in this process it's gonna be like an hour and a half which is also you're gonna get people coming in (laughs) hey there terica coming in like uh uh, what do you call them stevedores are gonna come to sort of take the the freight off the ship uh, so there's like in this like the first two hours of you being here, it's pretty busy with people coming in and off the ship. And as you're going through this process with Sue, um, Wesley, who hangs out down here very close to the low berth, sort of pokes his head in. He goes, uh, what are you doing? Uh, I'm assuming that the, the low berth people were. How many do I have that are waking up here? Two, right? Two. OK, so, yeah. He would just say, oh, but Wesley, come in here. Um, everybody, and he'd introduce the, the passengers. This is this is the uh, person that's been looking over you. This is the person that has been making sure. This is your guardian angel. I've been here ah. as well, but these eyes have always been on you. Shucks, I, I just make sure everything was working. And the two passengers, like, both of them are these sort of like a, one is sort of like a, a gentleman who's like, you know, maybe mid forties and uh, one is they're both human. Uh, and the other one is like, so like, you know, like sort of mid twenties and they, they're not, they're not particularly sort of wealthy looking, hence the low birth. Um, and they have got, you know, they've got their cargo with them. They're like small bags at the, at the foot lockers at the bottom. And they sort of smile, but they're still a little groggy. And he goes, so um, do you need help? Cause uh, I want to help if I can. And there's all sorts of stuff going on with the, Right and everything. I just want to be helpful. Can I? Can I do something? Absolutely. Um, I, I would assume too, because I think we mentioned this at the very start that we have, uh, like, the equivalent of a wheelchair or wheeled chairs or wheeled yeah. transport for everybody. Yeah. So yeah, he would he would have Wesley go get two of those, 
bring him down just in case, you know, just in case we would need to, you know, escort everybody off the ship that way. Um, but at the whole time he's, you know, working through joints, you know, doing all this stuff, it, they would notice yeah. that their nails have been clipped, yeah. that everything, you know, like, like just everything has been taken care of. If they, if they had like a, a nagging injury that, yeah. you know, something that could yeah. have been treated with time and, you know, by PT, those have all been yeah. at least alleviated a bit. And he goes, well, I just wanted to let them know um, when you're on your way out, we do have a, a, a herd of grebes uh, and they can don't look them in the eye. Uh, they don't like that. And they can They're get biters. a little violent. But they yeah, but they but they have been penned in. So you should be safe. But just, you know, don't look them in the eye. Uh, so, OK, um, and I'm going to go get the wheelchairs. And uh, yeah, and he kind of like stands and he kind of mimics, you know, bow stance a little bit, seem cool. And then he kind of heads out. Uh, to get the wheelchairs. Um, he would reach back blindly with like a fist, like to do a fist bump. Thank you, oh, my friend. Mm. Oh, and it's like, he's got a little pep in his step uh, as all of these, like, I mean, it is like this first and, two hours is like madness, right? Uh, Trooper, the I busyness of port. Quick, because Absolutely. Uh, I, I think I'm a, I think I'm allowed to do this in this system. If I'm not, just let me know. Mm. Um, can I make a roll or create an advantage or do anything like that with Wesley? Um, and it's not necessarily anything nefarious, but I, we have a very good working relationship. And yes. um, if there's a way to advance like the trust between the two of us, uh, that's something that Val would like to to explore if possible. Um, mm -hmm. And you know, to kind of promote this, as he's leaving, um, Val would say loud, not loud enough for him, you know, but you could definitely hear Val would say, "There goes the best among us." Uh, what I'm going to need from you. We'll call this like a, a, a chain, right? So uh, I will need from you a, it's gonna be like a social. And I feel like, see, there's a couple different ways this could go, right? Um, sure. It's definitely gonna be social standing, absolutely. But it could be persuade, it could be, uh, could also be carouse. Could also be, it depends on the vibe you're going for, could also be not deceive. That's not really it. Um, could be diplomat, but I feel like it's going to be one of those three, depending on the vibe you want to get. I, I'd i like it to be as positive as possible, so I'm going to go with persuade. It's actually the weaker mm -hmm. of my two stats, but I don't, Kraus kind of seems too not right, so if that's yeah. okay, I'm going to go with persuade. Mm-hmm. Eight. Eight it is. Uh-huh. You will begin you have a floating plus one that you can use on Wes. That is there waiting for you. There. I'd like to give that plus one to Wes if Wes needs oh. to do anything. Okay. But that's possible. <laughs> he it's might something that... he might need that, as a matter of fact. Uh <clears throat> depending. So um, we've got a lot of activity happening. I would like to know what all you would like to do. You've got freight coming in and out. You've got these passengers that are going to be sort of vacating your low berth. They're going to have to head over to the escrow office to sort of send all that sort of the, the funds, release them. But what all would you like to do? Um, I guess I would probably head the freight trade operation. Mm -hmm. I don't mm -hmm. know what that entails besides maybe telling them where it is. Yeah, they, and they just have to, you just have to deliver it. You just have to deliver it. Uh, and they're, they're going to go and pick it up because it, it's like an easy contract to get that freight back and forth. Uh, and can you I, will get 320,000 credits. Can I persuade for a little more? something is there a way that that works no okay that's fine freight's a flat fee okay like it's a uh, and it's i'm getting a, what 300 woody 320 000 credits okay thank you it's a it's a nice it's a freight is one of those things where freight is you can make more money with speculative trade although you could also lose money with speculative trade but freight is uh uh like a more of a sure thing if that makes any sense but it's not as lucrative but it's, right. a, it's a sure thing. Where did 
Did we buy that freight? Uh, we bought that in Thebus B. Yep. The two yep. ton. The two D ton. Yep. We're selling it here the for twenty three. tons. So that's, yeah, so you get uh, yep. three three hundred and twenty thousand credits. Uh, just it's a it's a flat fee. If the if the freight's there, you can pick it up and take it. Uh, do you all go inside the downport, or do you hang out in your ship? So sad. Uh, yes. I and know. if Val isn't going, Tirica would try and convince him to go. <laughs> And they would take their jammer with them. Mm -hmm. Y'all, what are you doing? So stay on the ship. That's uh, okay. so unhealthy. Like, but he's yeah. He's, you have to talk to him about this. He's one. not going to do. He's not going to do shore leave. You might want to talk to him. It seems very unhealthy. Then, then yeah, Derica would uh, swing by. They would throw the jammer into a backpack. Um, and as they're headed out on the ship, they would swing by, uh, is, is Val like in his room? They would just like search until they find him essentially. He's been almost exclusively in his room. That's so healthy. Is it still like a, is it still a, a wreck with all of the things? Like what is the state, the current state of the room with all of the building of everything? Very cleaned up. Okay. Mm. Then as if he's uh, done. <laughs> that's so oh, that's so bad. He's <laughs> uh, Terika would like knock on the door. Then, yeah, that would open up. He'd have his he has his uh, spy rig, not spy rig, but his uh, HUD up and everything. Yeah, what's going on? Oh, hey, I was uh, gonna run and grab a drink you want to join me mm. yeah come What's on that? man val it's it's been a long week let's get out and I chat like any other place i don't like the feel of this place that like welcome package <laughs> that didn't rub you the wrong way i i mean there's a a lot of warning signs in that welcome package I wouldn't recommend doing anything party heavy, but. Have you been around the rest of our crew? <laughs> well, we don't have to go with the rest of the crew. It can just be, it can just be us. We could just grab a drink for old times, please. I, I would love to do that. I would do that here. I will do that probably on any other place that we visit. I just have very bad, bad vibes about this place. It's. I planned on on leaving, but I don't like it. I think we need to stay here. The last time we all left, <laughs> Wes was in charge of everything, and it didn't work out great. And nothing against Wes. I'm just saying that I think one of us needs to stay here, and I have no problem doing that because I am not a fan of the vibe. If you bring something, I. Like that, yeah, uh, I, I, uh, this is going to sound weird, but I want to talk to you away from the ship. Away from the ship? Um, I know it sounds weird. I, I know it sounds nuts and I wouldn't ask for this, especially after you said no, thank you twice to me now, if it wasn't important. It's important. Do you, let's just, we don't need to get a drink though. Let's just step off the ship. If you're worried about being in the ship, I'm not going to ask any questions. Um, we, we can step off surely, you know, and then I just don't, I, Terika, I don't think you should go in either. I don't think anybody should go in either, but the rest of them are going to do whatever the fuck they want. You, <laughs> I would like to strongly suggest you don't go anywhere else uh, because this okay. place has just got bad mojo. Like, as in it looks, feels, and acts like it's still a prison? Yes. All of those things. <laughs> fair, fair, <laughs> fair, fair. Okay, well, uh, if you just, if you're willing to step off the ship with me and, and have a conversation, we'll, we'll have to get a little further away from the ship, but then we can come right back. 
and sure i'll grab I'll a bottle or something ship. hell we can get a drink off the ship we just do it like 50 feet off the ship is that okay quick question does is 50 feet far enough away from the ship for the jammer not to affect the gambler like Ooh. what is the distance erica needs to go because i feel like yes. they would know that i just don't know that yes whatever that I... distance is yes there is it has like a pretty decent distance you have, if you go like you know go 100 feet or so you should be fine i will okay. double check but uh mm -hmm. okay then that's what that's what terica would offer it i would be like oh, all right uh it needs to be 100 feet but i feel like we're splitting hairs here it's important i promise i i i promise it's important i can see it's important to you so absolutely yeah okay cool great awesome You would go grab a bottle of something uh, because we do have an auto bar. Um, Sue would pick something out. Tarek. Yes, oh, Sue would pick it out. You're, you're preparing for Terika. That one that you said was especially for Terika. Grab that one. Of course. <laughs> and Terika like doesn't grab glasses. Although to be fair, I I get the impression and correct me if you would have a different impression that like when they share a bottle, they're not pouring into glasses. They're just swapping a bottle back and forth. Oh, absolutely. hundred percent. Yes. hundred percent. Yeah. So Sue is a hologram and does not have hands. So Sue cannot pick up the bottle normally. Sure. Sue so, so then because you hear trooper, it. We're done, right? Yeah. So then you hear it. The, combat suit the military grade combat suit starts you can hear it coming to, like the elevator comes down and this combat suit just with like an empty visor just sort of holding this sort of uh bottle of sort of dranaxian uh rum sort of moves just all and then it's sort of like just raises up and just hovers because it can has anti-grav power and a lot of strength just hovers over and like drops down there you go thanks Sue. you're welcome Starts like putting the 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 suit back up in uh, Val's room, where it's safe. As a Sensors going. Mm. <sighs> Do you see that? <laughs> yes. Autonomous yeah. movement. Yeah. Uh, you've built something I didn't know was possible, Val. You know what else? What? I've been looking at the gambler. What do, you, what do you mean? Tech's way advanced for something this old. Two yeah. Things that we can integrate a web into it. Uh, no, I don't think we want to uh, in integrate a, a web into that. Let's 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 talk. Let's uh, help let's response talk. time for the engines for the weapons. We have redundancy I've got, in that Sue could handle. I've got great responses. Oh, I know. You what, saw me fly, like absolutely. What happens if, if something happens to you? I'm not leaving it in some acrobat's hands. <sighs> Nothing's going to happen to me, Val. It, the, the universe has tried enough times to kill me. Uh, it's never going to kill you while I'm around. You might have to run. And you might be down. So you can get us away. I'll talk to you about it. I'm not going to do anything without telling you. But think of okay, possible yeah. Things. Let's, yeah, let's talk. Let's, let's talk. Yeah, that's, yeah, let's, uh. possibilities. I've got your back too. 
you know, as we're like, I assume, walking out of the ship. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure. And as you two walk out onto the tarmac of this uh, downport, right, this landing pad that has got, um, well, I'm going to want, and I know that we've got uh, our our admiral out there overseeing the movement of the freight, <laughs> and they're and they're using walkers. They're using these big walkers to like pick up the freight and move these huge sort of uh, ton displacement ton sort of size crates out and in. Um, and I know we've got also our fake captain out there. I would like everyone who's outside at this moment to make a recon roll. Which... <laughs> I sorry. love that hat. Yes. Is that everybody yes. making a recon? Everybody making yeah, a really? recon. Recon, uh, int recon. Not terrified. Oh, God. That seems impossible. Uh, and if we do the recon, we can make oh, Jack it is. No. Yes, yes. If you don't have it, Jack of all trades will work. Yeah, that's Beautiful. about right. Yeah. Uh, Terika is clearly distracted by all of this A lot. that's going on. Uh, I literally yeah. just got told that Sue is could do oh, nice. things with the gambler if there were changes made to the gambler. I don't think they're looking at anything right now. Intellect? Uh, yes, intellect recon. <laughs> and nice. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So the only one who notices this is Severance. So you're outside of this uh, of the gambler, and you've got the uh. the uh, downport, the internal, like the inside building over there. It's pretty large. It's pretty big, um, and you've got all these things out here. It's pretty empty. And you've got these sort of big walkers coming in and like picking up this cargo and moving it in towards the the inside. So you've got this all this movement. There's a lot of movement, and your your downport passengers are going to be picking up their their luggage and heading in. Uh, this is an entire place you could just hang out all week and have a really lovely time. Um, and as you are <laughs> as you're waiting, and I don't know what's going on with Terika and Val. They always have stuff going on. They're they're they've got a bottle of alcohol and they're going to go and talk. I don't know what's going on with them. Uh, Severance, you notice something. You know, they describe that gray line that you're supposed to follow to get into the the internal downport, like where everything is. There is a gray line. And as a matter of fact, this entire area where you've landed, it's all gray lines from each pad into the into the sort of the, the hangar. Uh, and actually, there's so many pads and there are lines going for each one of them, like basically covered up the entire space. It was kind of like, oh, don't leave the line, but like the lines are everywhere. So it's not like there's anywhere to go that's not a line, right? You know, but mm-hmm. as you look, because this is a massive, massive space. As you look, um, there are other colored lines. There are a number and these for the small craft, right? Only for the small craft. Uh, there are some lines that are have got red lines, and there's some lines that have got blue lines, and there are some lines that have got yellow lines, right? So there's some some of these pads are, have red lines going into the hangar, some have blue, and some have yellow. So the vast majority of this entire space is all surrounded by these gray lines going into the hangar, but there are a couple mm-hmm. of sort of um, spaces for blue red and yellow and the yellow the yellow lines there are far fewer yellow lines than there like basically blue has the most number of lines then there are some there's a pretty decent number of red lines and then there are very few yellow lines but there are some yellow lines going from pads these and by the way they're only small craft right there are basically no landing pads bigger than small shuttles for these other colored lines So there's a lot of lines. Walkway lines. Yeah, that go in and out. And are these walkers following them specifically? The walkers, um, you got a good. The walkers all have slightly uh, blue, blue um, uh, 
highlights on them, like like little blue little bits of blue paint yeah. on them. Uh, and they're just moving uh, cargo, right? So they're moving the cargo from your ship into the hangar. They themselves are being personed by people. They're like actual pilots, right? Moving these walkers. Okay. Uh, they themselves also, now that you notice, all those guards all have sort of blue, blue uh, ornamentation on their uniforms. Like their uniforms are all gray, but they've got like little blue tabs. Uh, blue lines? Mm-hmm. Thin blue lines, yep. as a matter of fact. Yeah. As a matter of fact. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you don't see anybody with red or yellow lines on their uniforms. Right. But all the people with the uniforms all have these little blue, little blue tabs, and they're they're piloting. And you could probably, you could you could pilot one of those walkers. You know you could. Uh, moving them into the hangar itself. Me? Yeah. Tempting. Mm-hmm. Severance probably Do you want to steal not. one? I mean, yeah. Of course. You know. So they are. Uh, I'm sorry. They are walking on these lines specifically. Uh, they're doing whatever they want to do, right? So they're okay. like, so they're, they're, if they're, they're if walking like, all over the place. Okay. Yeah. If there's like an empty landing pad, they're not. They yeah. just walk across it. Um, they're they're fine. Uh, it doesn't look as if if you step off the line, you, there's gonna be like an electric like, like shop. Yeah, it looks yeah, like no. it's just like laser. Yeah. No, it doesn't look like that. But it does look like the entire downport is sectioned off, right? And it looks like the gray mm-hmm. section is where you are and where the other two ships are, and that there are these, there's like a blue, red, and a yellow section yeah. as well of this place. But there are no like spots. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like reserved. Like, oh, this section is reserved for guests. Gray block. And this section, yeah, it's the guests. That's that's y'all. Okay. But then there's like a blue, blue block, a, a red block, and a yellow block. And those blocks, if you look, there are a couple of um, a couple of shuttles. The blue blocks have a, cu- a number of small shuttles on them, um, and you can see uh, there's like you can see there are walkers there as well, taking what yeah. looks to you like crates of ore, right? Sort of like goods, sort of moving goods into like the basically it's going to be your trading center where you're in the hangar. Sure. Um, there are a couple of sort of shuttles in the uh, red block area, and there's like maybe. Like, let's say there's maybe a dozen or two, like maybe two dozen blue shuttles in the blue area, maybe like 10 in the red area, and there's like two shuttles in the yellow area. Noted. Yeah. But it looks mostly like... uh, All of these shuttles do not look like travel. Shuttles look like trans... Like, well, the ones over on the... The yellow ones look a bit more like... Like vehicles that you would use to shuttle yourself from one place to the next, but it looks like most of these things are for goods, like taking goods from below up to the top yeah. for trading purposes. A couple of, like, maybe, like, uh, personnel, that sort of thing. But it looks like if people are, are going to be going back and forth, they're going for the funicula. And that funicula, which is all painted with beautiful blue, um, is going back and forth. Like, all these little gondolas are coming or shooting down uh, into the atmosphere pretty regularly. But if you now that you notice, almost everything has got blue outlines and highlights and um okay flash right like it's all like impressive um yes it it just definitely still fits this jailer vibe yes okay but if you would guess this place is controlled by the blue right that's that's who's running this place yes yeah yeah. Uh, we know that our good heroes, uh, well, best friends, hey, Val and Terica, all, are, uh, and uh, are hanging out here. Do Quint and Severance want to go inside the hangar? No. Well, we're the hotel. Yeah. Like the, we're the, the gray. Great... The gray. Oh, where the hotel is? So All that the, the gray line. Like, Follow the gray line. Yeah, inside the hangar, you, apparently you have like trading spaces. The 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 trading spaces, the travels, age lounge, the hotel, entertainment. Uh, that's like the like that's where you go to like pick up new passengers to get new freight, to do all mm-hmm. your trading, mm-hmm. to get tickets, to register for things. You know that kind of a thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, Quint will, but first is going to pop back into. Uh, you know, just get a little bit more presentable, make sure weapons are stowed appropriately, yada, yada, yada. Um, 
make sure I have a specific Viridian amulet on Broken. me. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I just have a question for you, Trooper. This is me stirring yes. the pot a little bit. I'm ready for um, it. So I, I'm weirdly able to sense Val because I'm real good at sensing Viridian. Um, mm -hmm. And he's walked off the ship. Do I sense any Viridians still on the ship when I go to my quarters, which is, by the way, right across from Val's room? Um, like, as if he's still kind of there because Sue might still be there? That's all I want to know. Is Sue there? I don't know. That's the question. Sue is not corporeal. You do not sense any Viridian <laughs> left no, on the ship. Oh, no. Okay, because if Sue Sue was in the suit and could chat, I maybe would want to have a conversation with Sue. Yeah. Uh, is Sue in the suit, though? That's the question. Uh, Quint doesn't know. So if Quint doesn't sense no. anything weird, we'll just make sure they have what they need, and she's going to go mm -hmm. out uh, to follow the gray line. Yep. Uh, so it's so good to know that uh, you're going in pairs, so there's nobody by themselves in there. Uh, oh, is Severance going with me? Oh, cause... Yeah. Nope. No, I'm not. No. Oh, okay. I'm away, Jose. I'm staying on the ship. All right. Yeah. Well, then let me give you this as you... Uh, as Beautiful. We, so we're going to be ending in seven. Uh, with Severance out there and... Are you, dressing dressing up as, are you dressing up in, like... As the captain. Ending? To still be um, the captain yes because look this is a strict prison planet if any of those two chuckle fucks that came up to us earlier see me and i'm not the captain anymore that's not gonna look good for us as a ship and as a whole so i have to stick with it this entire time uh, okay fuel a big a fuel truck comes in good when spies start, break character in an area to start like, a fuel truck comes in, attaches to the gambler, mm -hmm. starts pumping fuel into the ship. It's all very normal. We have a few hours, wow. so we have to how process the, the fuel anyway. Yeah, how much is the fuel? I have to refine it, rather. Oh, it's going to be yeah. very expensive. It's not going to be that expensive. I have to okay. do that. Uh, yeah, it's... Because you're like a... I think you're a 40-ton. So it's going to be like... Uh, 4,000, I think. Yeah, it's like 4,000 credits. I think it might... I how think many, you have an extra two, so it's like 4,400. Yeah. Um, like 40 like like four sets of 10 40 or 4d like 4d 10 four sets of 10 oh okay um i actually think you're 40 i think you're actually Ford. no nice. i actually think you're okay. 41 or 42 so it's actually maybe a little bit more okay um i've been misinterpreting that this entire time okay cool thank you 40 so, dearest oh. captain harlock as yes. you walk time. into this hangar i'm the harlock 400,000 4,000 how much was it 4,200. 4, Thank you. Uh, and you're going to have to pay uh, 500 credits to birth there for the week. It's uh, yep. not that okay. expensive in the end right. because it's, yeah. So I know that they talked a lot about there being, uh, so since you went in, oh, uh, yeah. you can give me that that tactics military role, Severance, as you're okay. walking in. As you're 500 walking in. 500 for the week? Yeah, 500. Okay. Well, he's not going um, in. No, but he's got outside stuff he can look at. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Like, yeah. Just, like all the... I'm going in. Yeah. yeah. That's my whole MO. I'm a, I was... Yeah, it was a spy. Actually, maybe that's something that happens. Um, uh, I think if when if, if you're like, if you're leaving and I see that and we have that conversation mm -hmm. of like, well, mm -hmm. I gotta keep the... I gotta keep it up or whatever. I think I will like gesture yeah. towards like a calm... Or something. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, um, that would, like that would keep, take a calm. Yeah, they keep me in the in the loop. Um, yeah. yeah. And as you sort of walk off, I guess I'll do this sort of tactic. Uh, do you want to check to see if there's any freight available to pick up to Asus? Because that would basically be free money at this point. It's true. Since we're already yes. going there next. Yes, yes, that would be wonderful. All right, I'll do that. Nope. Give me some power. You need an eight. Well, I have one luck. Ha ha ha. You do. <laughs> oh. um, I will use that one luck. So, this they have pretty good ground forces. It seems yes. to you that they are on high alert, always. But it uh, seems to me that the, seem, might seem to you that they seem to be more concerned about 
people their leaving aura. than people coming. Yeah, mm -hmm. that makes sense. Uh, oh, look, at our, a lot look of, at our zoo. I mean, prison. <laughs> yeah, a lot of their sort of focus seems to be making sure that, like, the security is very tight around the funicular. When people come off of that sort of gondola, you can tell, you can see it. When people go on, there's like a very simple check of the paperwork. When they come off, there's like patting them down and really double checking their paperwork to make sure that they're not, I don't know, just right. escaping or whatever the thing might be. It's fine. I wouldn't worry about it. Uh, All right, so it's but like it's a, a, America, America border going down, Canada border yes. going up. Got it. Yes. Okay. That's oh, exactly gosh. correct. Yes. Uh -huh. uh, and um, as you walk in, Dearest, good pal, Quint, Captain Harlock, I'm going to want a roll from you. Wonderful. Yes. Yes. Uh, give me, let's say, recon would be... Oh. Oh, really? Okay. Yes. Yeah. So, jack of all mm -hmm. trades. Uh, recon, yeah, yeah. or jack of all trades, intellect? Yes, indeed. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yes. Mm -hmm. I did roll one and a two this time. That's great. The rest of the crew is staying out by the ship. Oh, mm -hmm. by the way, uh, Severance, there are watchtowers here. Just, you know, they're old, oh, but I'm sure wonderful. it's fine. Yeah, yeah, I figured. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, as you walk in, inside, it's actually, um, I would say that it's a bustling port, but it is oh. not that bustling. Oh, uh, oh. <laughs> it's a semi-bustling. Um, it is built for a bustling space, but there are not that many people oh. here. Right? Like, it, at 3 a.m. Does it look like it was yeah. built for a bustling space a long time ago or more recently? A long time ago. That checks out. That yeah. Sindalian Empire would have been very busy. Aw. Yes, Aww. but the Sindalian Empire okay. is dead now, so it's not like they're actually getting- Don't tell them that. Don't tell them that, don't tell them that. We can't say that. Uh, yeah, yeah, but they were like, built for. ain't gonna say shit about it. <laughs> yeah. There are a couple of uh, ships on the inside dock that you know, see are sort of getting repaired. So people are coming in and out. But again, this place has no high port. Yeah. It is in, it's jump masked uh, and it doesn't have a lot, mm -hmm. lot of stuff, right? So it's kind mm -hmm. of isolated in its own way. But there's like a, there's like a hotel. Uh, there are clearly ports for things going on. Uh, you've got like a, there's stuff happening. There's like people wandering around. Uh, you notice that people are marked, like that they have got, they're either, you can either see, first off, there are a lot of guards uh, that are armed. I, but checks out. So, they so it's don't, okay, I'm secretly armed. I'm always armed, yeah. technically. But I don't. They don't <laughs> seem to care about you all so much, right? They notice you, but nobody really seems to care about you. People kind of give a look at you, they see Perfect. what you're wearing. They kind of move on, right? Uh, Love it. The guard, the guards note you, but uh, fine. everything seems fine. Um, you note that there are trading stations, right? Where people can get trade, and, and there's like a lot of mm -hmm. trade going on. Seems to be local trade, moving things in and moving things out. Um, and you did make your recon roll. Um, you can hear as you're moving discussions from people who are traders back and forth. And uh, there are people in blue, red, yellow, right? Not full outfits, but like, you know, badges or notes or sort of patches, things like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, And you're hearing, like, yes, here, you know, uh, people sort of like waving tariffs, right? Waving tariffs. And then you notice that the people who are in yellow, uh, you hear somebody just say, well, uh, I see. All right. Uh, that'll be a 30% tariff. And you can see that you mm. notice that the people who are wearing yellow have to pay 30% tariffs to sell anything uh, oh. in this port. Uh, and this is the only way to get goods off this planet. And so all the folks in yellow, it seems, have to pay a 30% tariff to sell anything here is what you're getting as you're walking about the space. Uh, also note that you don't have to pay anything to sell here because, oh. uh, yeah, you're, you're friendly. Uh, it's cool. We're very friendly. Uh, you know, and, and you're trying to go and find, like, the, the place where you can get freight. When someone walks up to you. Oh, no. <laughs> I mean, hi. I'm friendly. Captain Harlock here. Uh, there is a man. Do I recognize them? No. That's my first question. Okay, that's... Yes. 
still could be a good thing or a bad thing. Um, yes. yes. Yes, a man walks up to me. Um, this man walks up to you. And he's wearing a suit. Mm -hmm. And he is wearing a tie in yellow. Uh, uh -huh. okay. So Some a, kind of broker. A, a yellow tie. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to know that people in blue and red are also trading. They just don't have to pay tariffs. Ah, so he's just got to pay tariffs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everyone's trading. It's just the people in yellow uh, okay. who have to uh, pay tariffs. And he walks up to you. And he goes, um, you are the captain of the, uh, of the old Sindalian ship, yes? Yes, that would be me. Uh, yes, I, I heard that there was a Drenaxian ship that has come into port. Um, I'm very glad, you are the Captain Harlock? Uh, that is correct. Harlock is the captain of that vessel. Yes, uh, I am Opius Piso. Um, I'm wondering if you might be willing to take a meeting uh, with my boss. He would have a, a, a good opportunity for you. You are, your ship is Drynax, you know, you, you are from Drynax, yes? Well, not me personally, but uh, some of my crew are. Uh, uh, but, um, I have connections with the, um, well, with the <laughs> traffic control. Your, your transponder says that you are from Drynax. That is your home port. Yes? Yes, yes. Good, good. Um, I am an agent That's for... That's what the transponder says. <laughs> I'm an agent for um, the speaker of one of the nations of this planet, and uh, oh, no. my job has been to keep eyes open for good opportunities, and um, my, uh, uh, well, the speaker of our nation would be very pleased to invite your compliment to meet with us. Uh, at our uh, parliament house. I see, one of the nations, uh, which nation might that be? Uh, and he just is a little bit quiet. And, I, says, and I think I wouldn't ask, the, I'm picking up the vibes this guy is laying down, so I think it'd be a little quieter uh, mm -hmm. because this person might not be against uh, her, her her radiance or whatever, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. Miss, Miss Thousand Titles, Dragon Chosen, etc., etc. <laughs> Go on, yes. Yes, well, um, our um, um, city state is called Falaka, uh, and our speaker, Loank Betis, uh, would be pleased uh, to speak with you on diplomatic and uh, opportunity means. Diplomatic. We would. We would be happy to uh, invite your entire crew to a, a a banquet. How generous of you. Well, um, I'm not my crew's entire keeper, and uh, well, this is shore leave, so I'd hate to give them uh, orders on that, but I will bring it up with them, especially uh, our more uh, diplomatic people that we have on the ship. Uh, yes. Um, if you would be interested. Here's some contact um, information. Yes. Um, if you see, uh, I'm, uh, I stay every day uh, at the small cafe there, but um, if you would be interested, uh, there is a small shuttle on Yellow 14. Uh, that is my shuttle, and if you would be interested in meeting with the speaker of uh, Falaka, we can take you down to our dome. All right, and where we will we be given clearance to get to Yellow Fourteen? I've noticed that they're quite sticklers for the Gray Line. For uh, uh, yes, um, that's more for us than for you. Uh, but ah. there is, we have the right of trade. Uh, but you don't have to take the funicular to go to our place. Uh, 
um, I can take you there directly in my uh, shuttle. Noted. Add Vok down. A Dranaxian ship almost never arrives, and a Dranaxian ship is something quite rare and special, and it speaks to great opportunities. We are... We have been waiting for something like this. This is perhaps the opportunity that we might need. And I, I like, sh- like, uh, I looked through the welcome packet if there was anything on like social customs. No. Like, are they handshakers? No. Oh wait, I will. Know. There's nothing on Falaka at all. There's no listing. Okay. Falaka well, is not the listed in, in that general, welcome pack. Have I all. noticed? Because I did make, I did make my recon check. Are people like mm-hmm. shaking hands? Do they bow? Is there like curt nods? Is there salutes? Like, is uh, there a social gesture that is like? There's like a there's a right. curt nod. Uh, by the way, there are. Um, Six, I believe, like in the sort of welcome packet, there's like the listed of the, uh, uh, what's interesting, there are apparently many domes, only one is named, and that is Dragon's Dome. None of the rest of you actually need to know anything about. Um, but apparently from your welcome packet, there's only one nation, uh, and that's the one that's all unified under uh, Dragon's Dome. Oh, this is cool. We might help support a coup. This is great. <laughs> okay. Um... That's fine. I'll just, I'll give him a nod and say, I will uh, speak with my crew and let you know. Yeah, good. Um, so, at your service, and he sort of puts his hand over his heart and he sort of bows. Um, and he sort of heads off, and as he sort of, he heads off and he, and he, go, and he goes, oh, um, I'm so sorry. And he sort of just like picks up something and just hands it to you as if you might have dropped something and heads off. So oh. it wasn't looking like you were all just hanging out. Yes, but thank you. I've been sorely lost without this. Um, and guards just sort of watch him leave. They don't watch you, but they watch him mm-hmm. leave as he heads back off to his cafe. Mutter something about, like, man, my lucky... <laughs> Put it back in my pocket. Uh, and I'm like, great! Uh, Diplomancy Part 2, Electric Boogaloo. And I'm just going to go... Hey. I'm trying to find some freight. Um, do you speak Old Sindalian, by the way? I do not. Oh, interesting. So, in this thing, all the things that are facing you are in uh, Ganglic. So you can you can understand all the things that are facing you. But there's quite a bit right. of text over on the mm. native mm-hmm. side that are clearly in some super old language <laughs> that you I'm do sure. not understand. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's not Solomani, so okay. I don't. No. No. But there is a bunch yeah. of language here. I will just tell you an old Sindalian uh, that is for people who are natives that you don't need to know about. Or Terika, if she comes, or if they come in. Uh, so, yeah, Quint's gonna just go look for some freight and a jeweler. Hmm. Hmm. And as you go off into this... And, and I would message Terika <laughs> right now, but I know that they're talking with Val, and I don't want to interrupt that. Because they've got something mm. going on, and yeah. there was booze involved, and I'm not going to interrupt that. I'm 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 cool, you know. Yeah. I might tell the Baron, so... but I don't want him to get in a tizzy about it either. So I'll just wait. We're just going to find some happy news, like cargo. Uh, yeah. And some freight. And as you go, you mm-hmm. we see you head in towards try to find the trading area for the trade freight moving past the ones where the people who are have yellow tabs are being charged outrageous tariffs to sell anything and nobody else is yeah. uh and as you're heading towards like place where you can get freight we have val Clint and Terica. just assumes that it's like um the pure like like if they were solomani which yes uh, but if they were yes. the the pure yes. bloods wouldn't have to pay any tariffs yes. but like that the not correct. at all any solomani you'd yes. have to pay the 30 percent tariff uh that would Quint be is correct. very familiar be with just... this social yes. type of structure yeah yes yes that would be accurate it would be just like that uh wonderful and... ah, we're good but apparently these people in the yellow and falaka they have their ears and eyes open and somebody from dry max is interesting that, uh, yep and as you sort of move in and we can see over there terica and val sort of Standing, sort of waiting to have this com- this deep conversation, and mm-hmm. uh, Severance out on the tarmac watching what's happening, including sort of noting 
who's wearing what and the sort of social stratification of this place. Noting that uh, most of the people who are doing all the heavy labor are wearing red tabs and almost all of the guards are in blue and there's almost no yellow tabs at all up here. Almost none. And as we sort of see this, we see approaching severance. Oh no. A person dressed fairly fine with a clipboard approaching oh, in a hurry. Fast. And as this person is approaching and sees your outfit and its sort of uh, symbols of royalty or nobility, sort of smiles and sort of strides with a bit more um, comfort and then just says to you something in old Sindalian. And that is when we're going to end the episode. What? Mm-hmm. Wait, do you do you speak Sindalian? I forget the severance. No. Oh man. <laughs> Terika is on a one person mission to have a conversation with Val at this point. It's killing me. It's killing me, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I'm doing diplomacy doing by myself right now. Good Don't job. I'm the captain. <laughs> so, I can't wait for the kid to see this. <laughs> Rocket. <laughs> Rocket's on the stealth ship, stowing it, waiting for a pickup. Uh, <laughs> Val and Tarek are on the tarmac about to have a conversation about something very serious uh, with, you know, uh, Sue nowhere to be seen. And... Mm-hmm. Uh, same. His name is Suit now, by the way. Suit. <laughs> suit. <laughs> nice. Uh, suit. Our, our Severance, who's wearing an outfit that looks like Drenaxian Sindalian noble clothing of its own sort. Yeah. Uh, Drenaxian punk? Little Drenaxian <laughs> punk. Has some sort of official coming to speak to you. And... Quint, who's trying to find a, some freight and a jeweler, has been approached mm-hmm. by someone from Falaka who claims that Falaka is its own nation state uh, and that their president, speaker, would love to come and have a conversation with somebody because specifically you are a Drynaxian. You are a Drynaxian uh, ship. And that's where we leave it. Let's <gasps> do an outro. Oh, what? What? I can't wait to hear about this. Uh, nothing. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just very curious to see what happens with these people. Right. I have a, I, I have a sneaking suspicion about I'm something, serious. and I'm wondering if I'm right. <laughs> I will just say that the ship that you have is a Dronaxian ship and is Correct. 200 years old, and it hasn't been seen in this system for a very long time. Uh, because Drydax is sort of dead and all those ships were destroyed, you're one of the only ones left. <laughs> and okay, okay. this is an ancient empire, not as ancient as the Sindal Empire, of course. Yeah. Uh, but people end. who don't know, don't know. <laughs> the people who do know, might know um, things. And this is uh, a holdover. You are in the oh. prison planet, the old prison planet of the great Sindalian Empire. No longer a prison planet, clearly, because... Sindal's not sending prisoners to them anymore. So, you know, that's right. no longer really hmm. relevant, but, you know. Yeah, sure. But you, All of these yeah. rules are totally normal. Yeah. Sure they are. Mm-hmm. It's custom, custom, voluntary. Sorry, uh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and just to note this, because you can just ponder it, if you, when you landed on Thebus, nobody pinged your ship as anything special. Most people are like, oh, we don't understand. We don't know that ship, right? Your ship is sort of, they could probably go and search in the, into the databases and maybe find out. But these people recognize your ship right away as a Dronaxian ship. Yeah. Uh, and uh, that might be interesting for them. Apparently they, they are interested. They're like, oh, we have scholars who want to talk to you about your ship. Uh, and then this yeah. other group is like, oh, you're Dronaxian. It's we really want to talk to you. a little nicer. Oh. Yeah, it kind of looks messed up. It's kind of looks janky. But, uh, Look, I was, yes. trying, I was gonna buy some silk threads and stuff to at least fix up the upholstery here, but you know, they and they might have some that matches since it's sold Sindali in here. Oh, they might, yeah. 
They yeah. might have on my list. Effects. I have a big shopping list. Uh, and I'm going to type it all out. It's in my notes. I'm going to type it up nicely. Then I'll give it to Trooper and see what I can get. I'm going to say, you're going to have to spend money on it. But I will say this. <laughs> you money. might yeah. get all sorts of things here, depending. Hmm. <laughs> uh, because this is a very old settlement. And yeah. they recognize it's a very Drynax. old settlement. They do yeah. recognize Drynax. Uh, and everyone's very interested in it. Uh, that is yes. Everyone. Yes, for different yeah. reasons, I imagine. Yeah. But you've been invited to speak to the president of the city state. Well, the speaker of the city of state. Of the phallic city of, state. Of Falaka. Yeah, Falaka. Falaka. Yeah. Yeah. And you, he's inviting you, he's, he's saying he can take you there in his shuttle rather than going through the funicular. And if you remember in the uh, welcome packet mm -hmm. that all of the recognized city-states are under the protection, right? Those recognized under the protection, unified. This one might planet. not be recognized. Uh, uh, to the get to any of them. And that's Dragon Dome. Yeah, yeah, that's the only... Uh, come on. Do you need anything else other okay. than Dragon Dome that... Okay, perfect, you have to get into Dragon Dome to get to anywhere else through their right. sub bay. Right, 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 right. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. But... That's so cool. This person's Dragon like... Dragon Dome's you know, like the hub. And they only recognize yes, the hub. Yes. But... So who cool. knows what kind of possibilities are there for you in this place? And what kind of customs they might have all sorts of customs. Now, I will note the welcome packet doesn't tell you a lot of things about down in the dome customs, because why would you ever go there? You don't really need to go to places that are not. If I do, I'm sure as hell doing it before we have a banquet with these with these yellow tied people, because they, they probably don't want us in the dome after that. I need my jewelry and let it go. Very curious about this jewelry. I wouldn't worry about it. Yes. <laughs> okay. I'm thinking you should worry about it. Like, no one anymore. came with me. I'm going to get my shit done on the down low. On the dome low. On the dome on low. On the dome low. Right. Yep. So let's do our outros first. Uh, I'm very excited. By the way, I'm very excited for you. Look, I don't think you're going to stay in number one very long. That's my that's my, my bet. I don't know what, what you're all going to do. I My guess is you're going to be like in and out. You're going to spend your week here and I go. I want to be. Um, that's what I want to do. That's my that's my guess, um, but I don't know what you all will do. Um, I will say though, you'll come back to this area on your way back. So that's the thing. You've been to these planets. Through. You'll come back again. So if you okay. make a lot of mess when you leave, you'll have to deal with coming back. We but at mess. the moment, everything's fine. I'm sure. So uh, why don't you say who you are? where we can find you, give some love, and uh, let me ask you this question, your outro, outro question. How welcome do you feel here on number one? You're welcomed? Yeah, because again, they said it's very welcoming, uh, and, uh, you know. Planet. Mm, let's How start with Cord. Hi everyone, it's me, Cord. Uh, you can follow me twitch.tv slash Cord or uh, on the internet is Cord or Mythomatic or something. Those are probably the names you could uh, find me. Uh, I stream a game on Mondays called Spoils of the Evervane, where a, a comedic advent a comedic group of adventurers are trying to uh, go through a heist within a just unveiled uh cavern full of magical crystals that also make up the ley lines of my homebrew world spellwind anyway uh you should come by and check it out it's on my channel um but uh my love tonight um i really love lindy that you went to, i really love laughing lindy i really love that you uh went ahead and immediately like flipped the switch and you were the harlock which was super awesome and seeing that happen was awesome and you're like i'll do it fine and then you just were so good at it uh, so that was awesome. Thank you for that. Um, and uh, I, every 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 week, uh, Ari, I'm always just blown away yeah. by the subtleties of, of you and your character and the growth and the uh, the physicality. Like even the entire part we were watching uh, the uh, a boy named the, the bot named Suit uh, when we saw Sue um, start to show up in that scene. 
and just watching the story that just your face was telling during that the reaction of describing uh, the uh, the automaton just sort of like walking and grabbing the the bottle and coming over and like yeah that was a cool visual but also uh, it was really easy for us to be there and watch Terika react to that as well because you were in it at the same time so. Uh, it was awesome, and um, this was a really, really cool episode. Thank you, Trooper. The um, reveal of the prison planet was super cool uh, because we were, like, thinking it was just this weird anti-pirate cool sort of scenario um, for this interesting culture, uh, and then it all started to make sense, uh, and then I was like, oh my gosh, I get it! And it was just a really... And, like, all of the... Like, a lot of the... Um, uh, the reactions of how, or the actions of how they are processing things uh, in their uh, formalities are all from the tradition of it being a prison planet, which was super cool yeah. to see and then figure out. So yeah. um, well done for that. And uh, yeah, thanks. Thanks everybody for watching and uh, thanks for having me. Um, the <sighs> welcomed question, it's weird. It's like a bittersweet welcome because like, there is a part of Severance who's excited that people are recognizing yeah. Yeah. the beauty that is the gambler for it being a yeah. Dynaxian vessel, not necessarily being like, yeah. here's a cool vessel that no one's ever seen. It's like, oh, this is that vessel. That's really cool. This is from that, that uh, yeah. empire. And he really likes the fact that people are um, recognizing that the Dynaxian empire even exists. Uh, and yeah. like, that's not a huge thing that people even... Um, yeah recognize i thought that he's met and has, has interacted yeah. with on these past couple of uh yeah. stops so um but he doesn't feel comfortable here i mean he does <laughs> um he's still he's in the same boat that uh val is in where it's like you know, let's just do what we need yeah. to and leave um yeah. but as i'm listening and watching cord i am like okay i think this actually there could be something here for us besides us just hiding in the in the in the vessel uh, I do also think that uh, that going to this potential banquet would be really cool. Um, as much as I'm like, we should probably just fucking leave. Um, I do think it is a cool way to maybe rub elbows and get a little bit more info on it. I'm still sort of of the idea we create a pirate haven and then uh, a pirate's nest right down off of the jump and then fill it with uh, drugs. But that's depending on how the meeting goes. Yeah, exactly. We'll just bring a vial of drugs, and if it goes bad, we'll run. Yeah. That will end so well. I just oh, want yeah. us to do that for just, let's just do anyway, that. Anyway, yeah, let's just do just that. Period. <laughs> Regardless of how it goes. Ah! It's a good break. <laughs> Bye! An entire, an entire just dome, city-state dome, completely high from psychedelic murder. And then they're all psionic afterwards and overthrow the red and blue overlords. Uh, and then we come in the and Val has the remedy and he's like, hey, here's the inhaler, everyone. He just inhaled this. You're welcome, Drynax. Thank you very much. And then we leave. <laughs> I'm just going to say, if you want to find out more about those drugs, Do which well. nobody's ever actually taken, by the way, no one's actually taken yes. me. We only had like a contact high from them yet. Okay, you too, uh, okay. I will just note that Severance is a street <laughs> chemist and Severance might have some insight to some things. Yeah. You're probably going to need it. It's going to be a bit of a team effort, I'll have to say, because right. there's going to be a bunch of things in there to work on that. But Mostly Severance. They're interesting. Hey, do you know how much power you could have if you take those drugs? So much power. Right. You should take them. Don't say that. You should take them. Uh, I'm, They're so good. Tarek is already on board. Tarek is. Right. And yeah, and, and you get that from, and you and you get that from me. <laughs> Damn it! No, you don't want to do that, Dad. <laughs> I mean, they get that from oh me. <laughs> Speaking of daddy-child relations, Ari, uh, who are you? Where you can we find like you? That. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Uh, and uh give some love and then let me know just how welcome does Terika feel in this place. Uh yeah, cool, 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 cool. Uh <laughs> hi, <laughs> I'm Ari. You can find me online um at Ari underscore ventures on most of the socials. And um if you want to see me live here in Seattle, 
I am performing in a show called Horror Unexpected Stories Grim. And it's where we take the same concept as like the Grim fairy tales, the original Grim fairy tales, and we base them on your hometown uh, and create Ooh. something completely improvised out of that. It's a lot of fun. It's really exciting. Um, the last show, we had trees that were sentient. And it turned out the trees were uh, old, like original people that had. Anyway, oh. it was a lot of fun. Love it. Like a person then became, and then and if you didn't cut them down, then they became this tree that came after like you. Spooky playback. Yeah, yeah. It was. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Really um, cool. Oh, and I have a David Bowie show coming up. Another improvised, like based on. Um, it's it's a uh, gonna happen. Thursday the 19th. Yeah. Uh, I'm super excited for it. So um, that's what that's what you can see me live in Seattle, or you can see me here every Friday night that we're running uh, playing Terica. They um, honestly, I don't think that they've really registered welcome or not when it comes to the planet, like they're kind of ambivalent toward it. There's been a lot of like, yeah. you are welcome. And also here are the rules. And Terika has been like, I have <laughs> bigger problems to deal with than this. Um, yeah, so yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't think they've picked up on it. Also, they didn't meet the woman who is making all those claims about the Sindalian empire. And uh, admittedly, I almost had them walk in because I was like, oh, they would be so spitfiery about what they're saying about Drynax. Um, but I think there's there's time. There's a lot of opportunity on this planet. So um, my love, so much love. Holy cow. It's really good to be back. Like it, I just love this crew and chat and yep. it's yep. like Trooper, the way that you guide things like it is a blast. Uh, specific call outs that I had for tonight were, um, oh man, I really should write these down because I like list them out in my head and then expect my brain to just remember it as if it's going to do that really well. It's really not great. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I'm going to make this it? a list in my head while I'm improving. I'll get back to this. <laughs> I'll, I'll totally remember this. It'll be fine. <laughs> I'll remember this. <laughs> I think the the ones that were really jumping out to me was um, right after the woman left the cargo bay and um, Lindy, when you turned to the Harlock and was like, just say maybe, maybe doesn't mean yes. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like I was like, oh, such a beautiful moment. And then, um, oh man, Cord, when you were like, when you're in there and she was trying to like get the get them like be like we want our scholars to do this this is a business deal and it's the only time i've ever seen severance turn down money um, <laughs> like you were flat out just like no not interested we're done like and i was like oh that's such an interesting fun character choice right there like huh yeah yeah. Because I suppose the question is, what would he be selling, right? Like, if he said yes to that, telling their scholars coming to look at the ship, what exactly would he be selling at that moment? You know what I mean? Secrets of Drynax? Mm -hmm. No, thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's exactly the same response Terika would have had, which I find incredibly <laughs> interesting yeah. that they align yeah, you know. for more often than Terika. But if you say flat out no, there'll be a lot less friendly than they already are now oh no i totally agree with that i just like <laughs> they're friendly like, you don't tell i don't even know oh yeah they so do say they welcome them a lot friendly. they're giving me first day on the job security vibes like someone gave them a, <laughs> yes. someone gave them some copy of like hey yes talk to them about the ore hey yeah sell something and he's and they're like <laughs> We have to go through this, but we've got these things now that we have to say. It's like, yes. it's like no, thank you. no, thank you. No, that's fine. Thank you. Like, that's very good. Like, that, no, let's just get through the paperwork. Just like we're just, perpetually. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. No, thank you. Thank you. But no, Look, thank I'm you. looking for. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the other two pieces of love that I have, real fast. Um, one for Greg. That hey, I want to like embody, like <sighs> deepen the relationship yeah. with Wesley. Call. I was yeah. like, ooh, that is really smart role playing. Yeah. Um, yeah. And at this point, Ari doesn't know if that's because Val cares about Wesley and if this mm. is all a attempt to like, mm. or Val is manipulating Wesley. Mm. I have no idea. 
One of those two, I think, is accurate. Either way, I love the choice. I thought it was strong. <laughs> and then your choice, Trooper, to have um, the suit, like have everything happening with the suit, regular, like describing it really well and giving me a lot to work with. But the moment where you chose to have the suit levitate, like <laughs> showing off what this suit can do a little bit in just a like getting of the wine, I was like, Oh, that's so good. And also, God damn it. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, we're going to die at the hands of Sue. I would not be surprised. Maybe, maybe not. Is it Sue? Who knows? That part, I actually am beginning to seriously question. Hmm. And I don't think my jammer is going to work, but we're going to give it a good college try. Yeah, it's well, not tricky. My college it's, tricky. Be, it's gonna be problems. You know, because because Severance's college try and all being kicked out for selling drugs right, to people. Yeah, yeah. So, but, so, so not yeah. mine. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe Val's, maybe Val's college try. <laughs> yeah, uh, I was short so, for valedictorian. Valedictorian. <laughs> yep. Uh, Lindy, Lindy, tell me who you are. Uh, where we can find you next. Uh, give some love and then tell me how welcome does Quint feel on the planet number one? I'm gonna go in reverse order because otherwise I'll forget things. <laughs> so, uh, you know, Quint feels like this place could be a whole lot less welcoming. So, you know, um, <laughs> by the standards that uh, she's seen so far, they believe that this place is on the very welcome side of its welcoming spectrum at the moment. Um, <laughs> because places have different degrees of welcoming, you know? And for, as far yeah, as, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. so far, it, it feels pretty welcoming for this culture. Um, <laughs> Quinn's been to a lot of planets. A lot of, yeah, uh, yeah. a few different empires, you know? It's, yeah, 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 you know, yeah, that's, yeah. that... <laughs> Feel pretty good about it so far. Um, that's why he was like, I'm gonna go shopping. Because I feel pretty dang welcome right now. I don't, I don't know if that's gonna change based on this this crew. So I'm gonna do things while I can. Uh, yep, that's, that's Quint's mentality. Uh, my love for tonight, <laughs> I loved Baron Severance being like, you know you're not the captain, right? You know, like you're pretending it's just it's just an act. You know you're not actually the captain and quit being like, ew, responsibility. No thanks. I, uh, it's just someone needed to do it, and Derica said not it. So uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no interest, but has to like now stick with it until we leave because again, these don't seem like the people based on their welcoming spectrum that would uh, appreciate it if I was to suddenly go by a different name and accent. So, no, they just, wouldn't uh, like that. I don't think they would. So uh, I am the Harlock until we leave this planet, um, and hopefully we'll never have to come back. Uh, it's fine, and if not, we'll just have to reverse. And be like, sorry, Harlock, you have to be me. Um, that'll be <laughs> yeah. Fun. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. I like that scene in the cockpit when, the when we were talking. Spies. Yeah, when the spies, the spies, look, spies are going to spy. We have to impersonate each other. I really it's want not to like Quint has so studied <laughs> the speech patterns and accents of her fellow crew members so far. Um, I wouldn't know. I wouldn't worry about that um, for any reasons in particular. Uh, but but Terika and Quint in the cockpit and being like the the mutual realization of oh shit, we don't have the captain. Like, just that whole like oops. We don't, do you want to? No? Okay, I'll do it. Uh, just how fast that was, just to like, you, nope, okay, I'll do it. And just, it was just, it was just great. And you being like, nope. Uh, and, and piloting that ship like a boss, just, woo, just easing it in there, giving us plus threes that we might really need. Uh, at some point in the conversations with these very <laughs> welcoming people. Um, I'll make some tokens also, for you all. <laughs> I also loved uh, Greg having just the, the worst vibes about this place. Just being like, nope, nope, I'm not going in. I will leave the ship, but I'm not going in. Uh, it was just beautiful. And all of our discussion about piracy. 
all of the piracy mm-hmm. talk and and plans and really crybabies yeah, and cool. baits and that was really fun uh and yeah. i hope we get to well, be able to maybe do some on the way out um i i just need to say for the record the well first off i need to say that i used very specific deliberate language in my welcome packet i noticed very deliberate language but also that was what i wanted to say oh that's oh, yeah, my love yeah, for yeah, the, the welcoming packet. video yeah. yeah it was so good loved it but also i just need to know that the welcome packet points out how big and dangerous and violent they are and how they're going to destroy all the pirates they do not have a high port they have a down port and that down port has civilian level sensors and yes. missile turrets yeah so i uh yeah they're either they talking a big talk level. or they have a secret weapon that we just don't know about yet uh Darn it. yeah i didn't think of that yeah <laughs> oh sorry uh, i'm just gonna point out you. <laughs> just pointing out the whole thing i'm talking about the jump masking, the jump masking is that they're super isolated and all of the ships that come in and out are really far away from that planet so therefore that planet probably is not going to be able to protect ships coming in and out, which means there's probably a pirate problem, which is why they talk big talk, but they don't seem to have the resources to go just fly out ships to which attack pirates. Which is why they're so interested really in our ship. Yeah. I mean. Yeah, yep, 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 yep. yep. It's that okay. Is. That's why. That, that would be it. Mm, uh, that would be it. If they yeah, try and take the gambler. They could pay us. <laughs> They cannot pay us enough money for the gambler. No, they what? can pay us to the gambler's to, and priceless. We can do jobs for them. Oh, they can okay. pay us in their loyalty. Yeah, we could get rid of some of their pirate problems for the cut of whatever the pirates have. I was thinking we just marry um, we marry little little Morden with uh, crybaby <laughs> King Olub, and then we it's have a, you know. <laughs> empires have been forged in stranger ways. Uh, I'm not against right. it'll it. It'll be so. It'll be so nice. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So right. that's. That's my love uh, for everybody. Oh just all the little, all the little moments of tonight was really was really fabulous. Um, and, and all the yes, well, someone else is saying maybe, or no, well, someone else is saying maybe, and then yes, no. It was just beautiful. It was it was art. I loved it. Um, cannot wait for next week and for uh, sorry in advance, Rocket. Someone had to step up and be you or. We would look more sus, and we don't want to do that here. So hearts. Um, <laughs> you can find me online at Laugh Love Lindy everywhere. If it's uh, social media, I'm probably on it as Laugh Love Lindy. Whether I'm active on it, that's a different question. But I, I, I'm there. I check it every so often. Um, you can find me specifically. Let's see. Uh, on next, you can find me on Sunday on Practice Worth of Sephora's channel for uh, Carousel Court. You can find me on my channel. That's where I'm mostly doing my stuff these days. Uh, you can find me obviously here next week, uh, but my channel on Mondays for Mondays in Alexandria, the new batch, where it's our D and D five E campaign. We're doing Call of the Nether Deep, and we are uh, chaos, and we're heroes. But heroes is an acronym, so don't take it to uh seriously it's um it's a, it's a thing it's a thing don't worry about it um and on tuesday we will have our stargate flames of hope campaign with is it this tuesday yes it is this tuesday because we don't have it this past tuesday so this tuesday stargate flames of hope with a special guest who might be in this call right now their name might be trooper sjp what wait what what? What? Yeah. Oh, I mean? Yes. yes. And I'm sure Nuggetosaurus, who is in our Twitch chat right now, will put more info in our super secret Stargate chat for a trooper for him to make decisions about things and talk about stuff. So uh, that's that. <laughs> and on Wednesday, you can find um, Nuggetosaurus uh, in my game, my Call of Cthulhu game, where she is not the GM. I am the, the Keeper of Arcane Lore. It's called Call of Cthulhu Below the Land of Fire. They are in Tierra del Fuego, uh, Ushuaia, Argentina, uh, in South America. It is a time for people have gone missing in a submarine looking for some ancient ruins or something. It was my idea first. Um, and things have gone terribly wrong. And so there, there's suspicions of foul play involved. So they are investigating and interesting things are washing ashore and are keep popping up. And there's a delightful penguin named Doris, who I will show for you all right now. So if you love Doris, because who wouldn't love Doris? I mean, look at the look at her. You uh, will love Doris below the land of fire. Is creepy. 
You should definitely go and watch. An you should watch pain. Will of Adam Fire because you cannot trust Doris. Doris has psychic <laughs> powers and maybe evil. Jack Grimm trusts Doris implicitly. And I have many little pairs of sunglasses for her. Um, and so if you want to see penguins, stuff penguins, if but the Call of Cthulhu didn't sell you on it, stuff penguins in different outfits uh, I, yeah, every, I mean, no. every week might, might pull you in. So that's that. Uh, I mean, no. Check that out. And that's me. <laughs> um, Greg also sends his love. I will also just note, if you want to do piracy, number one's a great system for it because... There's no GD Co. here. Their high port is not that advanced, and all the piracy would be happening pretty far away from the planet. It's a great My place God. to do piracy if you wanted to do it. It is. It's a good. That's why there's some pirates here sometimes. That's all you waited say about for that. land. We no. have a plan. We have a plan. We just wanted oh, yeah, fuel yeah. to jump. That's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you want fuel to jump, but also. You waste yes, all of our fuel. But also. Pirating everybody. Also, you now have confirmed that the high port is not full of like big, huge pirate hunting weapons and uh, ships. Like, but there's a giant mecha you out... Godzilla underwater though, waiting yeah, to, yeah. To, for the call. To go oh, hunt the pirates. there's a dragon in the dragon's dome. Um, yeah, that's, but, gotta, that's gotta be like... it. I didn't even think of that. Oh my gosh. Uh, it's actually you know, a hydro dragon, a hydro dragon thing that's under dragons. the water, and that's what they're talking about this whole time. Like, yeah, whatever, dragon. I, I will note that you will all probably have to come back to many of these plants multiple times. That's all I'm going to say. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. they don't oh, know what's no. happening at, at the hunt. I'm going to be the hard luck every time we come back here. Hmm. Or we say it's a title so, and just go with it. It's fine. I wouldn't like that. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, the, it's the hard yeah, it's, So, yeah. It's the hard luck. It's the hard luck. Um, yeah, don't worry about it. It's future us's problem. With <laughs> withdrawal <laughs> symptoms, that's so cool. That's cool. With oh, yeah. I times. imagine those are only going to get better as we continue. Yes, they will. Oh, hey. I got to tell you, those side drugs, they're not in the book because they're special. Somebody made them. Oh. Somebody engineered them. They're very exciting. Oh. I wonder if they were engineered for clones. Who knows? Oh. You'll just have to test stuff out. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. There's so many things I got to do. Like, really, look into those drugs. Oh, I, all we know is that Harlock got sick just being near them. Oh, well. Right. So, I want to go and read out our messages of love from our audience. Uh, and just, look, it kind of sucks to be at number one. Sucks to be them. Uh, just imagine that you're sucks a prison planet, and then one. your entire, right? Their entire empire is just destroyed, and they're just kind of stuck there. Like, well, I don't know. Yeah, what's that yes, like? we're still here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what is it like having your entire planet being destroyed and then needing to deal with that sort of yeah. repercussion? Oh, oh, wait. Are you saying that you as people from Drynax are less sympathetic? Weird. Uh, but maybe the, the, the Soleimani who's had her planet wow. invaded by another empire and has been like, oh. been had to like leave their planet, so lost funny. their entire planet. I'm the oh, Harlock. Hmm. I'm. Uh... <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so I'm going to have to dress completely differently next week and no one talks right. yet yes. <laughs> yeah, uh, I can't wait uh, I've decided this is my number one old Sindalian jacket that I'll wear while we're here like uh, Old NTW has given us our title suggestion which is It Sucks to Be Number One which I think is good uh, yeah. and <laughs> I want to go and read out our messages of love for our, the folks who've given us tips or bits uh, we also, by the way, we have a, a merch store, which you should check out because you can get really lovely merch uh, that's related to us, like our, you know, our uh, Crash that. Jones and the Drynax Barbarians with our Crash Jones shirt over there. We've got some, like, just goodness all around, but to our messages. Um, first off, Stormbender327, who's, who's a lovely supporter, says, another great episode. Thank you all, beautiful people. Thank you. Uh, we got a hundred bits from Will and TW, who's one of our sponsors, who says, Oh, thanks for all the awesome episode in a cheerful, awesome place. It's a very cheerful, awesome place. And then he says to us, You're all number one. Aww. Aww. Get out of here. Uh, yes. Uh, Stormy oh, says, I'm train. <laughs> no, you're, you're number one, Willem. 
Uh, and Josh Mianart, who's done the amazing art, uh, who's, uh, oh, just, ooh, who actually did the art yeah. for this. And all of the Josh Mian art, if you get it, he gets half of it. And he's a, like, he's a brilliant artist. So, like, you know, help him out. Uh, said, wonderful episode, everyone. Love our drama llamas in space. Me too. Uh, and I want to Great. name, just read out the the last message. Which comes from Stormbender327, and it's really important. This is a direct quote from me. Apparently, I said this. I don't recall saying it, but apparently I said it. Apparently, what I said was, do drugs and piracy. So everyone, that's our, that's our, our, our last That message. does sound like something you would uh, say. Remember, kids, do drugs apparently and piracy. Apparently, I said it. Just saying. Uh, so, do drugs and piracy. Um <laughs> Those are all our messages. I'm Trooper SJP. Uh, thank you so much. I want to thank every one of you who is watching and those of you who are watching on the VOD. We will be back next week when they are prob. I don't know what they're going to do. They might go and have this banquet with the speaker from that one city state that is not recognized uh, <laughs> by the warden with the long title who's the best ever and who hates pirates. Uh, and But also she's a She's a warden. You know what I mean? She's a prison warden. Well, I mean, it's no longer a prison, but... <laughs> you know. And, uh... <laughs> sure. And who knows? Maybe you all have, like, chat with people, you know? Uh, it's a great, great place. Great place. Only one place, only one place to get to space from. And that's this place. Controlled by the warden. I think it's fine. And uh, I think it'll be lovely. You can find me on Sunday uh, for Carousel Court. Uh, my character got shot in a very who shot JR kind of way, except we know who shot JR. Uh, I mean, you know. And then uh, Monday, you can find me over at Montreal by Night, over at Wandering Games Channel. That's at 8.30 p.m. Eastern, uh, where uh, my character is at Three Humanity. And is, uh, you know, uh, people keep trying to attack attack him, and if he gets attacked, he's probably going to frenzy and then just murder everybody uh, around for a while. So that'll be fun. Uh, but come and see us next Friday when the Harlock will be back and we'll have to be like, what have you all been doing in my absence? And maybe they'll all just take drugs. <laughs> really, really experimental drugs that nobody really knows what they do. do it on this I'm planet. excited. Yeah, yeah. On this planet, on the prison yeah. planet, I mean, yeah. sorry, X, what are they going to do? X prison Send us planet. to prison? Yeah. No. <laughs> nobody, nobody will do anything if they don't find yeah. out. Just yeah. act normal. Just act normal. This yeah. isn't yeah. going to go wrong. <laughs> We're so welcoming here. here. Yeah. It'll be yeah. fine. Yeah. Just act Look, normal. Don't it's... freak out anyone. <laughs> just don't freak out. Don't freak out. Just don't Look, freak you're, out. You're just guests. Danger. You're the guests. That's Danger. fine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, cool. I will also note fun times. They're pretty isolated, which means culturally they're pretty isolated, which is going to be fun uh, because, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Uh, 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 I'm seeing, I'm, I'm seeing Ari being like, oh, oh, I don't know about that. I'm like, but hey, <laughs> old Sindal. Yeah. That Good part times, I friends. am very curious about. Yeah. Uh, did you know the Drynex call themselves the, like the Star Dragon Empire in exile? Because like various sort of nobles from the Sindalan Empire who were on Drynex sort of reformed. Uh, and they also think of themselves as the inheritors of the Sindalan Empire. Weird. Interesting. Fun. Fun times. Yeah, it'll be interesting Wedding to see bells. if anyone tries to say that whole we're the originals in front of Terika. That'll be an interesting conversation. Yeah... But you don't want to be a noble, so I think it's fine. And uh oh, no, no. It's nothing like that. Nothing about that. No. 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 We'll talk about eugenics later. And uh the very <laughs> Oh, and nobody's told Terika about the vision of all the Terika clones. Cool, 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 cool. Oh yeah. Yeah, they still I don't didn't have that vision, so I couldn't. Yeah. To be oh, fair, Severus yeah. and Terika haven't talked. True. Yeah, we've only mm -hmm. we've talked over comms. But that's it. Since you have the vision, right, we haven't right, actually right, sat down right. and had a conversation. Mostly because Terry. Don't worry, I'm, I'm just buying stuff. Don't worry about it. 
I'm just buying stuff. Yeah, yeah. I'm just okay. buying stuff yeah. for That's the ship. Get... I'm getting yeah. this cargo. Yeah. I'm maybe buying a couple odds and ends for myself because I don't have much. Because I was you can do that. That's fine. You've got money. I paid you, but I'm worried about any other. Any other Can I buy some stuff to fix up the ship? Oh, that's fine. Yeah, I can money. say, fuck all y'all, go yeah. into that meeting by myself. <laughs> but I you won't. Could, which would be awesome. <laughs> like, by the way, I found some cool stuff. You were supposed to radio me. Whatever, it doesn't matter. I went to... Where have you been? doesn't work. Don't worry about it. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's a very... Was. Well, you said to radio if anything, like, yeah, dangerous exactly. looked like it was happening. I didn't feel... Look, I just... Maybe I have a lower, like... Maybe you just have a lower danger uh, threshold than I do, but yeah, I felt yeah. super yeah, safe. Yeah. Oh, I suddenly yeah, pointed yeah. to my ear to tell you to radio me every time. Not to baby what radio me when you're endangered. When you're in danger. Come on. <laughs> Oh, you didn't want to hear an update uh, of, well, I'm looking at linens now. Oh, pouring here. Maybe he did. <laughs> and and to I need to be fair. for the cushions in the lobby. <laughs> to be fair, it's a very time-honored tradition to make decisions on your own and then come back to the crew and let them know that you murdered somebody. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, you, when you Don't come back and you're like, that's true, then you'll be a part of the crew. So Noted. All right, my friends. Noted. We're going. No, 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 they're going to somebody a question. Go. <laughs> <laughs> so good. There may be piracy. There may be murder. There may be chatting with people. Of uh, yeah, we'll 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 talk about it next week, everyone. Uh, it is lovely to see you. Uh, you all are wonderful, and thank you, everyone, for being here. And uh, we will catch you all in the next time. Bye, everyone. <laughs>